of Canera was committing crimes. <laughs> I also commit crimes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, 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 we yeah. lied. That, that is that is the nightmare yeah. I've been waiting for for about six I years. Production where I'm just yeah. screaming in my mic. Please stop. Yeah. Uh, oh, that me off every night. We, 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 yeah, we weren't saying anything. I think well, I don't even remember what we were talking about. We, we, probably stuff we are going to say on the show anyway. So, so anyway, yeah, it's another episode of By the Numbers. Uh, I'm your host, Richard Lewis. Uh, absolutely boiling hot out here in Vegas. I'm exhausted. I've been up all night packing, getting ready for the move to the UK, filling in fucking paperwork and all sorts of shit. Um, so low energy show, I'm sure. Uh, but Sam, you've given me a lift there by fucking everything up right at the start. <laughs> I do. A little boost, just what I needed. Uh, of course, my co host, Duncan Thorin Shields, in a chipper mood today, in case you couldn't tell, ready to wreck two of his favorite targets exactly, on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, he's on. Oh, yeah. oh, here we go. Here we go. Love it. Uh, and of course, uh, shout out to our sponsors, uh, they've got a new promotion going on a, a new way that you can bet because obviously well we've had uh esports events going on with the ongoing covid stuff you know that we're, we're always looking to broaden our horizons uh so uh, what we're offering now is uh live streamer betting so if a streamer's playing a game you can do in-action bets uh on your favorite streamers uh so uh you can go check that out there's a panel just below if you click on it it'll tell you all about it uh but anyway com a great sponsor to have they've sponsored me for a long long time and that relationship is going to be ongoing right the way through 2021 so make sure uh you go to com slash rls to show them that you support them because you support us because they support us everyone supported everyone the world's great uh and let's uh let's get into the show By so the way, before yeah, we on. actually go because obviously we, yeah, before no we go into all the csgo shit and all the rest of it right just because yeah. this won't be a topic that'll come up i did want to actually ask you because listen the people who watch this show are grown up enough now we can talk about some things that aren't just cs so i just mm. wanted to know as an aside did you see this lcs broadcast that they've tried to do where it's like remote and they've tried to add in all this sort of like fucking meme shit that's like listen i I already obviously don't fuck with a lot of meme stuff, right? But I understand yeah. when you do things that, you know, you play on like a funny thing at the moment. But like, did you see where they had this like sushi dragon guy just like dancing with like fucking Draven or like, I actually thought yeah. I was in some sort of mad fever dream there. Like, this is like 2020. I was I was watching the Monty uh, review of it. it the Monty good, Cristo. Yeah. yeah was, uh, the, the reason I was watching that was because The Last of Us 2 uh, is out. I think it's today. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was watching like one of those like early leaked playthroughs and it was like, right. it's so bad. Well. Uh, no, no, mate, mate. If you like the first game, it's heartbreak. I'm not even going to do spoilers. Oh, right. okay. The leaks are out there. It's really fucking bad. So I just, just wanted to... It's on everything that you loved. Oh, the oh yeah, of course, mate. Because it's the classic. <laughs> it, 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 it was The Last Jedi all over again. Right, uh, my expectations have never been so subverted. Uh, so really, really bad. Really bad. So I needed some eye uh, eyeball bleach and some brain bleach. Uh, so I was watching that review, even though I haven't watched an LCS broadcast for a while, but fucking man alive, Amazing, gotta feel, <laughs> gotta feel sorry for the people involved with that one. I don't understand. I, I, I suspect that Monty wasn't going to do a review until he saw how fucking awful the broadcast one was. And he was like, right, time to get my favorite shiv, yeah. riot, the old riot shiv out. Yeah. I, I'm, so I'm, but it was, uh, it was pretty awkward. I, I, I'll say though, for a remote broadcast, like on a tech level. You know, it was it was okay, but some well, of the content say, was whack as fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Is like I'm not talking about yeah the remote elements and the fact that you're not in the same room. Obviously, nothing you can do about that. Like, but I will say, even on those grounds, like that's also why you don't want to go the meme slash banter route when you're remote because I, they had the same problem. I could tell because the person that I noticed this with was Corby when he was trying to talk. He seemed mm. really awkward the whole time, right? And what I can tell was happening was he had the same problem I did, which is when I've been doing this blast tournament, what they do is, right, obviously when we talk, we're just in a Discord channel. So it doesn't matter that we're on the other side of the world. Right? The light latency is almost non-existent. We can just talk mm. as if we were in the same room. The problem is to do a good broadcast, you have to all go to the central location where the producer is and then the signal goes back to each of you you don't talk directly to each other so as a result when i do those blast segments if people have wondered why there's every now and then like a weird pause there it's because when samler stops talking it's about five seconds before i hear that and five seconds before he hears me so as a result mm. you cannot be trying to dance around each other and banter and like like if it basically 
I, I, we had to literally come up with a system where no joke, he had to literally just address us by name. Otherwise, it, we'd just be jumping all over each other. So that you can't do it like a normal broadcast. When someone else makes a fun joke, you can't jump in there or you can't add something. Like, it feels really awkward. So even though, like, you know, you try and soldier on and be a pro, like it, it, that is the trying aspect of that circumstance because that's what makes the pro production good, unfortunately. Yeah, but that's what you have to do in like uh, when you when you're doing news broadcasts. I think sure. if uh, you know, if think if the audience was a little bit more kind of savvy about that, you know, when you do those like joining us live uh, from the scene, joining us live from Chaz, we've got you know, and they'll go over <laughs> to a reporter, and uh, yeah, and, and obviously <laughs> in the second one called Dave in the yeah, UK, it, of course, yeah. Well, it, it, <laughs> It, it's uh, yeah <laughs> tim tim ohanra ohanrahan is on the scene and you go over and there'll be like uh, you know a few second delay between what you say so there will be some interruptions and talking over each other because because the delay so drastic so yeah it does make um as you say off the cuff jokes and like interrupting each other and having a bit of talk over each other it sort of makes that kind of banter and that kind of interaction like nigh on impossible so it can feel very artificial so again it's it's actually a tough circumstance to work under especially if you all know each other on the crew and that's like your normal yeah, exactly. go to you know kind of modus operandi but yeah i did so I, I did watch that i did watch that and i want to thank monty in advance for helping me forget about the finale of the last of us 2 um which is horrendous uh enjoy uh, uh rip to all the people who are going to pay 60 dollars to, to find out uh so anyway i did a story duncan Wait a minute, one last thing. If you like oh, yeah. the game, why are you spoiling yourself by watching all the fucking... Some guys but no, so what happened was, the leak the leaks came out in advance. I was, like, pretty hyped for the game. Um, and then some leaks came out in advance, uh, where basically, because they're another one of these game studio that just fucking work their uh, staff to, to death during crunch sure. time. One of one of their partners basically in protest leaked pretty much the entire game. Reasonable, <laughs> yeah, like on on YouTube. Uh, and I was watching it, and I was like, "No, it can't be. It has to be like a joke. It has to be like an elaborate prank." But it was all like legit, and uh, like it, 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 it's it's utterly horrendous. It, it it is literally the only thing that it's vaguely comparable to is like the Last Jedi in terms of like the person who wrote this just, just taking everything from the, from oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they're, they're not even character. the same characters yeah they're not even the same characters <laughs> not not even the same characters like things that make no sense and the sto the writing's terrible in general the themes are awful you know it's like a terrible revenge story violence bad you know one of them um so yeah so i just wanted to see literally how it ends and just to put the cherry on the cake uh they do the ending and they could leave it there but instead they do a callback scene to when a beloved character who's no longer with us is still alive and just shit on them as well yeah yeah why not <laughs> that's amazing that's actually amazing i know it's like you know what what we've done already is a little bit questionable we should probably just leave it there Nah, is there yeah. any way we can just violate everything that people loved about the game? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and, and to see that shit. Yeah, oh, it's 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 gonna be rough. And of course, because uh, you know you've got that guy, the guy who made the guy who made the game, like Neil Cookman, who, by the way, there's a sex scene in this game where the guy, the head creative director of Naughty Dog, looks identical to the guy in the sex scene. Like it's it's like it's creepy what as is fuck. That? What is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Neil, like you, you've got to. You see, you'll love it. Like I can't say too much on stream, but you should go look into okay. this. Neil, Neil. His his real name's Druckman, but everyone calls him Cookman. You should just go and look <laughs> up. You should, no, you should go and look up. You should go and look up because he he um he, he like obviously Naughty Dog made like a bunch of good games, of course, yeah. but then. He got, he went aboard the Anita Sarkeesian bandwagon. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, it's one of them. Like, you'll <laughs> love it, mate. Give me yeah, just, just go down that rabbit hole. Just go All down right. that rabbit hole. You'll, you'll love it. But yeah, there's a mad sex scene where basically his clone is having sex with someone in the back of a truck. And it's like, why have you done that? Like, that's mental. That is like, like that's like the guy from, uh, what are they called? The Powderpuff Girls or whatever? The Powerpuff Girls? Oh, I remember what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, he did something similar, right? Where he basically tried to insert himself <laughs> in the show in a romantic manner with like, the yeah, girls, which is like, what is going on here? Like, you're not even hiding this, mate. Like, yeah, like someone immediately sent me the fucking graphic of it, and I'm like, 
Why would somebody like make it so obvious that they're drawing themselves in a cartoon, being involved in relationships with like anime girls and shit like like you're 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 deranged, mate. You need some fucking help. But anyway. So that's that's what's going on. So today's going to be amazing because it's like been, the game has already been a critical darling. Get this for fucking you like oh, as in all the scumbags have rated it super high because they're all fucking paying yeah, off. Yeah, but no, but it gets worse than that, mate. Forget paying off, right? The the uh, the agreement because of the leaks that Naughty Dog, which is owned by Sony, had with all of the games journalists were you in your review you cannot factor in or mention the last twelve hours of the game. And you must agree to that to have access to the game to review it. Uh, it's like who the fuck would ever agree to that? Like, like it's so That's outrageously the unethical. What's mad about that as well is have they never heard of the Streisand effect? You're gonna have yeah. the opposite effect to what you want if you're already paying these fuckers off. Just ask them to go light on you. Don't just go conspicuously. Don't mention anything about the game ends. <laughs> right? Yeah, Obviously, like everyone's gonna go look it up, aren't they? Keep in mind, it's about 25, 30 hours of game. So it's like, Jesus. if you're being, if you're being <laughs> generous, it's like a third, right? So you're not allowed to just, you're not allowed to mention it. And, and it was like this mad reaction they had to the leaks, because all the leaks are true. And uh, man, some of the games journalists, uh, it's so pretentious and wanky. I saw one Hollywood reporter, I think it was, they reviewed it 10 out of 10. For years, this is, this is a real quote, Duncan. For years, we have been asking when video games will uh, like grow up and become as uh, solid an art form as movies. But what? now with The Last of Us 2, we're going to ask when a movie's going to catch up to Jeez. this game. Like, uh, like, get me out. Yeah, yeah, get me out. <laughs> Of this and then there was there was another cunt what the fuck did it oh yeah the, 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 this guy said like in a landscape where everything is i can't remember what which one he used um uh, like some ex yeah like crank or something like some you know some <laughs> stupid shit but he said uh the last of us 2 is the schindler's list of games I'm like, hell, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah maybe yeah maybe <laughs> don't maybe don't re reference that mate maybe that's don't. inadvertently the worst quote ever yeah, no, exactly. You know, he, he got wrecked. Even his fellow games journalists were like dogpiling on him. Yeah, like, why are you bringing that yeah, up for? Yeah, right. you know, like, just, just, just let them fight. Just let oh, them no, fight. yeah. Full on Godzilla. Like, <laughs> let them fight. Like, loving it. Loving it, mate. So, yeah. Um, how do you pick that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know, mate. I don't know why he's fucking gone. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Mate, it's some of the things I've seen. But anyway, it's all 10 out of 10. It's all 10 out of 10 Fuck reviews. Yeah. Game of the year reviews. Uh, you know, so I can't wait for today because, right, first of all, a lot of streamers are going to be streaming playthroughs oh, on Twitch. Reactions are going to be insane, especially given the gratuitous sex scene where Neil Cookman has inserted himself in more <laughs> than one. He's inserting himself in the game and he's inserting himself in the game, right? So that that's that, that's probably going to get people banned on Twitch with the new rules. Oh, then on... Then on top of that, right, just the overall reaction to like, well, I'm fucking 20 minutes in, my expectations have been subverted in the worst way, like people are pissed off about it already, so it's gonna, it's gonna be a great, because uh, it came out in New Zealand, so some... Some like New Zealand and Aussie Dude, streamers. This is also where out. these companies are just so beyond the pale. Because like, if you know, right, your game's got problems like that, here's mm. how you would do damage control if you're smart. Like I said, you would say, oh no, you can mention that stuff, but just don't mention it too much. You know, don't make it the folks you're out. And then you'd also tell them, listen, we know it's got problems. So just give it a reasonable mark, like eight out of 10, you know, don't go too crazy. No, no, still has to be 10 out of 10. Like you can't just gaslight my entire reality from all the culture, like, we all think this is amazing. Like, there's no way it's going to make the backlash like ten times bigger. Oh no, it's, it's going to be brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's like well, you have to understand as well. Like just game, uh, like access. Game also, come on, please. Get, you've already referenced it. It's Sarkeesian. There was already something of an undercurrent, Richard, where people were concerned about ethics in games. I know. Uh, I know. Why are you doing this? Yeah. So the. Uh, the, the 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 way that it works with access games journalism if you know if you know like anything about the industry is if you want to get like early access early leaks clips if you want to get invited to the playthroughs there is like a tacit understanding that you will be given the game you know at least a seven like an absolute worst case scenario if you really really don't like the game and don't think it's any good there's an expectation that you will go to an av an, a, above average mark and that's the lowest that's the scale like modern 
modern critique is pretty much between seven and ten. And if uh, if it gets like they don't even review the games that get less than that, They're like in their mind, because there's no you know generally the only one you would feel comfortable giving a mark of seven or six or five to is like some indie game. So it's all all the AAA games do get a big bump uh by all the mainstream publications so it's going to be hilarious because you know in the same way that like the last jedi was like you know on i am on rotten tomatoes it had, like, it all the reviews yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah i know like it was like it was up there with like the godfather part two and stuff according to critics you know uh it goes i, I think in fact like on rotten tomatoes it goes something like Black Panther, The Last Jedi, uh, Shawshank Redemption, and then, you know, you get to, like... Uh, oh, mate, there was, such, there was literally months where the aver the aggregated critic review of Black Panther was 100%. Yeah, no, do you not see the article about no, the guy? Not even, a, like, night year, like, not make it reasonable, just all No, it. no, just a, bit no a, guy, <laughs> a, a guy came in, this is actually true, because I covered it on the podcast, Some, I think he was from the Independent Ireland, and he gave it, like, a, a 60%. And said that, you know, formulaic superhero movie. And uh, all other journalists wrote articles about him saying he was a racist. <laughs> Give me out. Give me no, out. saying he was a racist who deliberately sabotaged Black Panther's 100% rating. So... Oh. Yeah, well, wait, not really in, with, have any bullshit or lie. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. no. Going on in it, you know, so that's that's why I've worked there. in the industry so so long. Yeah. It's just this beautiful exactly. like enclave, a nice little haven where you never meet liars, cunts, or scumbags. Uh, it's it's all good. Um, so anyway, uh, there you go. That's our that that a new segment. Dunk, D Duncan and Richard talk about games. So uh, whatever. Uh, right. But, well, so anyway, Duncan, I did a story, mate. Sure. Uh, We've I've, been I've promising it for a while, right? Yeah. Mm. I published a story, uh, which was basically what's going on behind the scenes uh, at Astralis. That was the premise uh, of the article where I interviewed, like, uh, a bunch of sources of people who are, you know, close to the org, uh, you know, uh, people who are close to the CSPPA, people who are close to the players. And this is more and... work, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd probably say all told, I started it approximately a month ago, because that was kind of like when I started to realize, obviously, something was up. Sure. But basically, round, round about the time when all the moves started happening, um, and it was, it was, and it, we were just getting, as you would say, gaslit to fuck about, you know, uh, well, we're all standing down, burnout has just now miraculously occurred and hasn't been an, on, an ongoing problem for a long period of time. Well, remember, mate, mm. one of the things that happened was, we didn't say what it was because we didn't know ourselves at the time, but we said, the second that Glaive said it in the way that he did, something's off with this. Like, this isn't the way you'd do it if this was just totally legit, especially not when you then see them scrambling to get the other players and all that bullshit. So it's like, the thing that's ridiculous to me is, as I'll, I'll absolutely be categorical to emphasize, we never ever said he wasn't burned out and that was fake. That is one of those areas where that Casper guy is fucking <coughs> absolutely out of pocket. Like, if it wasn't yeah. for the fact that, unfortunately, it's very difficult to do de de defamation cases, like, that should be defamation. Basically. The problem is it won't cost us any money, so there's not really any case there. But, like, that, that is just a literal barefaced lie. I'm not talking about he had an opinion that was different or he characterized it differently. He just 100% lied. None of us... Ever. I haven't actually seen any big figure in the whole scene say that they were lying about burnout. I've never said that once. Yeah, I mean, so for, for, for me, I, I think that might actually have been aimed at me. Because I did put a tweet out basically saying, so I'm supposed to believe at a time when I know workload has been reduced because no one's been traveling and people aren't practicing as rigorously because everyone's cooped up in their houses and not boot camping and stuff. I'm supposed to believe that is when these players decide to that na now the burnout is too much uh, because it doesn't make sense because what you what you would do if you really needed a holiday you wouldn't take it now like if, you, if your boss comes in and goes and say you're a bit stressed sure. out i'm going <laughs> to reduce your workload by 70 percent, and you go ah ha, ha, sick note dickhead you wouldn't do it would you you would take the 70 percent reduction in work and then when he went right so you've had a lovely break now Let's get you back to work to your hundred percent workload instead of thirty percent, and you would go, "Nah, sick note, dickhead." That's how you would play the game. So, uh, the thing is, the that isn't inaccurate though. Think about it, yeah. right? Based on the information known publicly and privately at the time, that is actually not an unreasonable postulation. 
to make. Now, the key mm. thing is you didn't say, like, it's not burned out. You just said, yeah. basically, like, that's a bit weird, isn't it? And what we now know is they were trying to get the break before, and this is just when he was able to push it over the fucking yes. finish line, basically, with legal means. Like, so yeah. that actually implies... So it actually... In, in, his, in essence, you were right. He isn't just burned out now. He's burned out fucking last year, if not further yeah. back than that. It's just that this motherfuckers would never give these guys a break. Yeah, but the, so this this think has been going on. Imagine having the goal, though, Richard. You know, right? Think about it. this. Is the craziest thing I've never seen anything like it from Astralis. It's mm. full like Riot Games level approach. Normally, what you do is do damage control. You try and excuse yourself, or you try and explain why it's not a problem. All these motherfuckers do is just go offensive. They don't even defend. There's no defense. They just go on offense all the time. It's it's actually outrageous. Like, imagine when you're the one doing that shit to your players. Then trying mm. to be like, and by the way, whole community, should we just start hating these guys? Because remember, he puts a sentence at the end of that quote where he says something like, you know, like, we need to change this thing in our scene. Like, what the fuck do you mean change? What, some fire us, basically? Get us out the scene, presumably. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, what you got to understand with this Casper uh, Hvit uh, guy is that from, from all accounts, like, privately, uh, you know, when I was researching this article and things have been told, he's just basically a, a classic egotistical, narcissistic cunt in, in the sense that, you know, because he had a professional sports career and was a, an accomplished handball player, I mean, obviously, handball at Speaking as a Brit <laughs> yeah, speaking as a British person who lives in America, like you know, give a fuck about handball. What is it like dodgeball? I, I don't even know what it is, but whatever. So you know, he he's obviously a guy that sort of comes out and has his own ideas about things, and and basically, you know, one of the things that you know I sort of alluded to in the article, but didn't directly state, was that. What you have to understand is, even when the players had that break and weren't at tournaments, you know, through Christmas and January, moving into February, they were still going in and training. And the way he's got it set up is, it's like, it's like no other team in the sense that it's it's like exercise and you know every all your all your time is accounted for. You have to do between thirty seven and forty eight hours a week. Uh, a lot, a lot of that is done in their training facilities, not just fucking at home. Break. This guy yeah, not, burned them yeah. out. I mean, listen, yeah, the scene yeah. itself, as you fairly point out, listen, they did do an outrageous run, and because they made the semis of every fucking tournament, you were they would just play until the end of every tournament. But even so, it's the that's what's so crazy about this scenario. The very motherfucker trying to blame people like us for this scenario, or just spin it that it's all great that it's going on that we get extra players is the person adding to yep. the burnout, and then oh. Yep. Irony of ironies, the Astralis org that people can't stop fellating for being geniuses and crediting for the success of the team is proven to actually be one of the worst orgs to burn you out like a motherfucker. <coughs> This is crazy. Yeah. No, but you only have to look at the common sense uh, of it all. Why is it that the organization that is supposedly the most attuned to the, the prospect of burnout, why is that the only organization that has had two of its star players, its starting roster, have to acquire medical notes to, to go on a break? For burnout, I think technically like, Gabby did as well, but like, there's only one other that I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I've never never heard of a team that's had two, right? True. And yeah. and and if and, and, let, and let, let's also be real, like you know, th there's th I don't want to I don't want to call this what it is, but hopefully now people start to realize why it, it behooves the CSPPA for any player that stands down to say, "Oh, I'm burned out." Yeah. Right? Like, hopefully people can see the pieces on the chessboard. Like, there's things I'm not ever going to state directly without without evidence uh, or without having, like, multiple sources verify it. I have to be 100% confident. Sure. But, but... It's the most politically expedient excuse to give, basically. Or reason. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. face it. There's the thing that people don't get, by the way. I One of the reasons I can say categorically I never said anyone wasn't burned out is because I acknowledge that most of the top pros for similar reasons are burned out and cannot mm. get a break. Yeah. My point yeah. is that has just been life in esports for the last fucking five years at least. If you want to go to Korea, it's just been forever like that, mate. So the point is, if that was really just everyone's everyday life, that means that that cannot be the motivating reason. There has to be another reason on top of it, as we've now discovered there is in this scenario. It's like, what? but the point is... Why go and argue about vague things you can't say about your team or your org or your contract? Or your 
Why not go with something that every, like, basically, this is like the classic thing, right, where in 1.6, right, the Navi team, in amongst all their other scumbaggery, used to <laughs> yeah. just get free timeouts and free setup time and warm-up time by claiming they had mouse problems. And the reason, mm. Lopez said this years ago, it's actually the most genius excuse, because what is the admin going to tell you? Nah, actually, you're lying, your mouse is working. Like, all you have to say is it feels wrong to me, you know, mm. and you just get out of it. So the point is, it could also be true, but it's just, that it's just, and it's like, an, an, it's uh, you can't falsify it. Like, if you say I'm burned out, they just have to let you go. They have to, everyone has to believe you. That's why it's so dirty that you implied we said that they were lying. Because actually, yeah. by default, you'd have to believe it's true. I, I could believe most pros are fairly burned out. Well, so if anyone also wants to know why, like, you're going, but Richard, why aren't the players... Why didn't the players come out and say things? Surely they would exercise player power and criticize the organization, but actually they've been very positive about the organization. You need to understand the verbiage that's in the contracts, right? Because I went out and got a copy of the uh, contracts for the Astralis group that, that all the players sign. And, um, and, and again, like there's, there's interesting little bits in there. So the, the, it's got this thing where there's a clause called the duty, the confidentiality and duty of loyalty clause. Oh, and it, and I've, I've got it in front of me now. I'll read, I'll read it, uh, what it says. The player shall observe secrecy with respect to any information that may come to his knowledge in the discharge of his duties for the team. This duty of secrecy will also apply after the player's resignation from the position with the team. So, in other words, even after you've gone, you better you better not say where the bodies are buried, homie, or, or we're coming for you. Now, again, I don't know. I don't know if that's a clause that would hold up. I mean, that's actually it sort of standard. Too far, doesn't it? Well, it, it's actually they're like what you see in American uh, uh, business contracts. Um, I don't know whether it would hold up in Europe, but that's like a standard thing that they put in. They don't word it exactly like that, but in US contracts, you do have a lot of you know confidentiality and perpetuity, um, essentially. You don't but, usually use those words like loyalty, though, and secret. Yeah, you say, yeah. They normally say, yeah. Like, yeah, like essentially, like any internal dealings are confidential is normally how they phrase it or something like that, you know. Mm. Which even then is pretty vague, and usually they don't enforce those clauses, you know. Yeah, so, you know, like, I, I understand the players are in a rock and a hard place. Like, you can't you can't publicly come out and say the stuff they probably want to say. But if you, if you look at the timeline, basically, it's, it's, it's like this. The, right. Uh, and, oh, and, and just to add to this point, anybody who believes that a, the, the, this line of bullshit that Astralis have given... Right, because there's an interview out there. Because I'm collating all, of, I'm getting all this Casper Hvitz sins, and I'm I'm not done with Astralis by any stretch of the imagination. I'm 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 oh mate, I've already got the next banger story. It's already done. There we go. Oh uh, yeah, mate, I I don't just punch you once. Like I'm punching you as you're hitting the fucking floor, like out cold. Like you know, like you're in, if you're in the octagon with me, motherfucker, you're getting domed. It's that simple. So I, I've already got the next banger story coming out. But just just to just so you know, it's complete bullshit. I went through and got all of the fucking interviews that this guy had done publicly. And it's like, I should make just a YouTube video just with, with a timeline of the bullshit. Because he's saying, oh yeah, like, we've always wanted to have a 10-man roster. or Well, first it's a 6-man roster, then it's a 7-man roster, then it's a 10-man roster. But he said that has always been the plan for three years. No that, way. Yes. I've got him. I've got him bank rights on that. So the question then becomes, in 2017, when Device first started with his diverticulitis or, you know, uh, what, or <coughs> celiac syndrome or whichever one it is, whichever digestive disorder it is, why in 2017 did you only use stand-ins? Why didn't you go and get... If you, and, and literally, he says, we, we are aware of player health needs and have been since we formed the organization. And it was um, and for three years, we've wanted to have a six-man roster, seven-man roster, ten-man roster. So if you always wanted it, why didn't you do it when a player was provably sick? Why didn't you do it when Dupree's father passed away? Why didn't you, um, you know, how much time off did Zonic actually get when his father passed away? You know, these are, these are valid questions. Sure. There were, at no point during any of these what what would be considered crises for for these players and their coach did they go and even think about getting long term replacements so they could have some time off. 
By the way, one thing I just want to state, because one of the sad things about the way that, like, information war is the new battleground, and it's not about even facts, it's about how you, like, frame it, or more importantly, in my opinion, it's about how you deflect or distract to a certain other point. So what happens is, right, people kick with their corp to try and mind fuck themselves that Astralis is still totally fine. They use this logic that goes like this. But all the other teams don't give them time off, Rich. They don't have a sixth man. Yes, the point isn't that Astralis, by the way, are the worst people ever for the way they've dealt with their team. A lot of teams might do similar things. The problem is what Richard just mentioned there, that they were doing the same things everyone else was, then fucking patting themselves on the back, calling everyone else out in the scene, and lying and saying they're doing the opposite. It's the lie that's the scumbaggery. I don't know if people have just gone so far that they think lying is just cool in all scenarios, but it's actually considered a moral sin. Like, I don't know if you're aware yeah. of that. I'm not, not trying to get religious, but like, it's basically corrodes your fucking soul to lie like that. Like, in this scenario, you don't even tangibly gain from it. You just trick people for a while. Like, it's the shittest, like, payoff for lying ever. Yeah, and, and so, just to give people a, a spoiler about the next story, uh, I spent the last two days, uh, I got in touch with another journalist while I was like digging into all this bullshit. And, uh, he basically sent me, he said, listen, I've, I've, they, they fucked up in an interview with me and he forwarded on their, uh, email, uh, where they did an interview and this was in April. And in there, Casper Hivit again, because he thinks he's Machiavelli, but he fucking ain't. He uh, basically said in April, right? Timeline's important. Oh, yeah, there are going to be some other TOs, wink, wink, that are going to allow us to bring substitutes in. Now, we, we then later found out in May that that was the blast. But Ooh, I went interesting. Some sort of a relationship between Blast and Astralis. I personally wouldn't know anything mm. about that. That's why I've had this week off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I went and spoke to the other partnered teams of the Blast and said, Well, when did you find out? Because I've got an email where Casper Vip says in advance he knew. And they didn't find out till the first week of May when the rule books got sent out. So Astralis were told in advance by a league, yeah, yeah, we're going to change the rules. So if you want to get ahead of that curve, you, you do it. And so they've given a competitive advantage to uh, one partner team over all their other partner teams in the league. That used to be owned by the parent group. <laughs> yeah. You can't even, like these, that's the saddest thing, you know, about, I've always said it, but I'll say it again. The, the most actually underwhelming thing about the corruption in esports is that these motherfuckers are just used car salesmen. They're not even on the level that, like, big fucking white-collar criminals are where they know how to obfuscate it and hide it. Like, their idea of hiding it is to just have one shell company that you can just click on it and it goes, yeah, owned by Nickel Nihon. It's like... Really, really like it. you didn't even make two clicks like I'm, I got, you're like fucking amazon just one click and i'm there like what are you doing so ba basically i mean i i, I think that's <clears throat> a, a huge issue <clears throat> uh, especially if you're one of the partnered teams um you, you know that competitive advantage alone is yeah yes yeah absolutely um so expect expect to read about that soon but i'll just tell you one of the little detail of this uh Astralis story so when i filed it uh and and it go went over to the editors at deserto and they basically said like obviously we'll reach out to the organization uh because you know i don't do it i think last time i talked to nicola Niom, I, I, I told him to go fuck himself and called him a window licker or something i can't remember and i've no got way. him, I, I got him blocked just because people are gonna think if they are naive like isn't it normal mm. journalistic process to ask for a comment yes it is but that's in scenarios where it's like in good faith if you've like contacted yeah. people and they've just lied to you 50 times, like provably, you know what? You are not actually obliged to it. It's a professional courtesy. Keyword courtesy. There is no like law of journalism where you have to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, one for example, the BBC it, in the UK does it because it's taxpayer funded. They don't do it because they have to. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things where it's it's obviously best practice to allow sure. somebody a chance to, especially if there's allegations, right? Yes, agreed. But uh, you, you know, you're under you're under no obligation. Like, I don't go to Activision Blizzard directly because they have lied to me 
so many times, it's like, what, what is the point of me picking up the phone to go, here are these h h article coming out, here are the allegations, what have you got to say about it, didn't do it, okay, fine, you know what, it's a waste of my time, it, it's a waste of their time, honestly, because I'm, I'm just going to put a sentence at the end, blizzard denied, you know, so wh whatever, but anyway, so DeSerto reached out to Astralis, and uh, I, I always say to them, if you want to manage a relationship and you want to reach out and you do it, I'll reach out to the people that don't like in my face 24-7. Once you've lied to me two, three times, I'm done. I'm never picking up the phone, and you can just deal with the fucking media fallout, and that's life. Uh, if you wanted to cultivate a, cur a courteous relationship, don't fucking bullshit me. So anyway, we... um. When when they uh, asked them if they if they wanted to make a comment, Casper uh, Hvit said, "Oh yeah, we'd love to." And um, so how about uh, I could do an interview as well? And I was like, "Okay, cool. I'll I'll do an interview with him." But the intimation was the interview would be in place of the article, and I'm like, "Well, why would I do that?" Why would... Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. But why would I pull an article so I can basically play? P PR man to you. Um, so I, I told DeSerto, like, well, obviously, I'm happy to do the interview, but also, obviously, I'm not, we're not going to pull the article. So he then went away and, and basically did that interview with the score who came in with another one of their videos. I mean, listen, right? I'm, I'm sort of like this about, I like the guys over at the score, but like, first of all, right? Your videos, essentially, 25% like of your videos are just like, Richard Lewis broke a story, we're going to read his article, and we have interviewed the person that the article is about and given them a platform to lie and gaslight everyone. And then and the title is like, what really happened? Yeah. By the way, yeah. when people the throw truth. Around, people throw around clickbait, obviously, very often. That is, by definition, 100% clickbait, because guess oh, yeah. what? Those journalists haven't even tracked down additional information sometimes. And also, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they're not God. They don't, They aren't omniscient where they can go, by the way, guys, not only am I going to inform you about a lot, I'm going to tell you everything there is to possibly know. How could you know that? Like, you, I've, I've never ever titled anything like that. That would be outrageous to give a title like that. Yeah, they've ne and they've never reached out to me once about a story either for like any additional details. Like, yeah, they've hey, got need from you, mate. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like, for, for, yeah. For example, exactly. though, like they, they might want to know certain things. Like they might want to know that Casper yeah, was angling that, yeah. for a, for a PR interview to 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 respond sure. to the allegations. So what, whatever. But yeah, basically, long 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 story short about this piece, like uh, the. The, the, the reality is that things are not all right in the Astralis camp. The players, uh, and you just have to think about it in logical terms. The players were asking uh, about potential breaks in December of last year, saying like, we've just had a mad 2019. And in particular, that December was insane. I, I mentioned it on the last podcast. You need to get your head around five tournaments on three continents uh, in 43 days. It, 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 like, it was mad. Well, and they went to the finals. The major as well. Yeah, it, it, it's mad. They, and they went to the finals pretty much of, of yep. or the semifinals of all of them. So they had deep runs. There's no time off, you know. You're not at the fucking pool with the losers, you know, sipping on fucking Mai Tais. You're, you're having these deep runs into the tournaments. I mean, people seem to forget what happened with ECS, where because of this ongoing dick-waggling yes. contest with ESL and e e ECS, you know, remember that was the tournament where Team Liquid didn't even get their equipment on time. They had to go straight from the airport. You know, it's it's fucking madness. It's it, so they were they were they were talking about breaks back at the ESL finals, like we need one. And the org fucking said, "Well, we'll look into it, <laughs> right? We'll look into it." And then on top of that, they're looking into it. Was oh well, what what you've asked for? All five of you having a holiday together? Because spoiler, those players they might like Esatag. They might like Yugi, right? They don't want to play with him. They don't want to play. They don't want to play with those players. You Why have to understand. You, you get more, yeah. by the way, as people now know, 
when you like, especially when you're not going to admit what's happening and that you're taking on lesser players, when you're going to give the pretense that these are legit players, remember Zonic himself did an interview where he said that these wouldn't just basically be subs, that they'd yep. be worked in the rotation. Yep. So when you lie like that, guess what? When you play with those players and they shit the bed and you're bad, that's now what Astralis is. That's real Astralis. You've said it's real Astralis. So you will now not only be basically trying to get through like a difficult period where you know two of your teammates are off and you're just trying to survive and keep your head above water, but everyone in the scene is going to laugh in your face. Justifiably so, Casper Vid and Device. Yeah. Well, so it's it, it's it's madness. It's like if you go, those players wanted to take a break together and come back together and keep on playing together and build their legacy together. That was the whole, that was what they were asking for. Instead, what they got told was basically like, nah, at, at best we can, we can give you the holidays, but it'll all have to be staggered. One in, one out, bring in a sub, you go then. Like, that wasn't, that wasn't the deal. And so anyway, the players basically say, look, we'll let you get your shit together and get some extra people on the roster so we can start taking these holidays. And then, because of COVID, and I still haven't figured this out, I still haven't figured out the fucking brass balls it must take if you're an esports organisation that no longer has to send your players to events because everything's moved online, to then go to players and staff members and go, yeah, bloody hell, we're going to have to cut your salaries by 30%. Why? You're saving operational costs right now. Explain it to me. Not a single sponsor's pulled out. Ah, yeah, but the market's uncertain. You just float. Speaking of markets, you cunts just floated on the stock market and did a twenty-two million dollar raise. Now you're telling people to take pay cuts. What the fuck are you talking? It's about? like you said about when they did the raise. They technically might not have even needed the money, but the mentality of the Nikola Nyhoms and the Astralis management is this: everything that is done can be done on other people's dollars, never on my dollar. So as a result, even if we've got the liquid cash, ah, just tell them to take a pay cut. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. By the way, the thing that people won't get, because people might not know League of Legends, is they might think, why did you bring in all that stuff about Origin in LEC? Yeah, yeah. It's the most egregious in some ways. In some ways, it that was. one's more insult. Like, luckily, those You won't read about it on the League of Legends subreddit, of course, yeah. <laughs> luckily, those players lawyered up and were able to not have to take the pay cut. Because if people don't know, the org convinced them to take a pay cut so they could get a better player and have a chance to win. And then came to them after that again and said, now you have to take a pay cut. Like, in that kind of a scenario, again, like, how could you do these things and then come out publicly and pretend you care about your players? You don't. You ex you literally financially exploit your players. This is crazy. The worst thing is, is so, put, put it this way, if you, if you, if you that, that origin team is going to go to pieces in the same way Virtus Pro did, probably, because uh, the, 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 the detail with that is not everybody got let off the hook for the 30 percent pay rise so uh -oh, some of the players be resentment then yeah of course yeah some of the players ate the 30 percent, and i think two on the team didn't so imagine that Jesus. you know yeah but like yeah you're right that was the most egregious because obviously what happened there was it was like hey guys yeah we, we understand we need to make some changes to the roster they're like oh we really want to we really want to play with this upset guy we think he's really good. And then, well, we've got fixed budgets. You know, it's it's November 2019. We've got fixed budgets. So if you want him, you're going to have to actually... And it wasn't like defer a pay rise. It was take a physical pay cut. And they all agreed to get this guy on the team. And then they come back like fucking four or five months later. Will you take 30% as well? Like, no, fuck you. Like, you've already had my eyes out in a fucking doggy bag. Just want to play with someone who isn't shit. Like, you're, you know, and, and this is, this was the reason that detail was included because this is a recurring theme with the Astralis organized group and, and their teams that they essentially mind fuck the players into paying for the things that they need. Like, one of the things that was said to me by one of the sources <laughs> I, talk, by the way, is to pay for everything. The only job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of, one of, one of the uh, things that a source said to me. Oh, while I was doing the interview, was like, basically, the 30% pay cut wasn't necessary, but if you were going out and getting additional players on the roster, the 30% obviously covers that salary. So, in essence... Remember remember this guy, he's called Thorin, who said that, like, there was two scenarios were possible with what they'd said. Either they were exploiting the players they'd gotten by paying them next to nothing, which still isn't fine, especially if you pretend to be who you are, or they were literally... 
to asking people to take a pay cut and then using that money to pay the expenses of those salaries of the players. That's another one of those things where people said I was like floating dangerous rumours and how dare I do that when people are burned out. It was literally a fact. And by the way, I didn't pull that out of fucking thin air. Thin, mm. I, what people don't get is this. The reason why I asked you if this was like months long is some of these things me and you have known about or heard whispers about months ago like or at least we start to hear dots that could be connected that could imply this that then and then as you get like the light gets brighter and brighter as you look into it more and more well the point in this scenario is if, if me and richard were just reported rumors he'd have done this story a month ago as soon as this first roster move happened he just threw a, a column op-ed like i reckon this is what they're doing he didn't do that because he actually had to go and verify all this shit and in fact as you can tell by what he's saying now not even mm. everything gets in the article that's why when wankers on reddit act like we just make shit up or that we're just clout chasers you know how much fucking work these articles take and the worst thing of all by the way is Every now and then, it doesn't happen on these cases because there's no other bloody watcher on the wall. But in certain other cases, some other one crew didn't do his due diligence. It just scoops you. And then you're just fucking coming in late to the party with the same shit. But you're, you've verified it where he's just guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, fortunately for this, it was like there was a level of access I was able to have that I don't think any other reporter could have done. And that's like no disrespect to any other yeah, reporter. Yeah. You know, but I've got like... I've got like 15 years you ago. Back into, deep in the Danish scene, come on, yeah, that's awesome, yeah, that shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, I got, I got 15 years ago into fucking Danish events and, and I know all the players out there. So it was just a case of, you know, fucking having to dig deep into the old source network and start putting the pieces together. But all told, you know, it was it was dozens and dozens of hours just to bring it over, over the line. And to be, to be fair, uh, I did say that I was going to get called a liar. They, they didn't do that. I, I, the Astralis comment basically amounted to, yeah, you kind of got us on a few things there. Not going to lie. That was it. Uh, none of the players have come out and said anything. So that's reasonable. And the community generally seemed to have accepted it. There was one dickhead who was wearing a bow tie. Don't even know who the fuck he is. He tweeted at me. He's like some ginger dude in a bow tie. It was like, look, I can't really be him because you wouldn't put it up with your profile pic if it was. Sure. Uh, but uh, he, he basically messaged me and said like, um why didn't why didn't i get comment from astralis and i said well it's there i did it's there in the article and he and he you know he was doing that thing where he's clearly like i realized very quickly he's clearly ill because he's delusional um but other than that it's been it's been okay as a, i think it's, it's by been the way, i would just tell play, people who are watching this show think of what we're probably going to discuss later <laughs> about mir and furia right do CS GoPros mm. seem like they have fucking the safety lock on the trigger of their Twitter account? No. Mm. Players love to call people out. Like, I have, I myself have been called a liar by people I actually consider friends who are pro players, who in private, yeah. they would even then later say, oh, all the time. what you were saying is basically true, but you know, like, I'm not going to let you just say that in public. It's like, all right, cool. Mm. You just fucking call me a liar then, and then forever I have to have dickheads linked to that and say that you said I lied. Plus, even just think of this thing we talked about last week with Device. Like, he's going off on me when I make fucking jokes, mate. If Richard was lying about all this shit... Why wouldn't he just say, Richard, it's not true what you're saying. It's, oh, I don't I don't appreciate this story. Like, oh, couldn't you have consulted me? They haven't said zip. They haven't said well, zip. So the, just, to, just to put a pin in this and then we'll move on to the Brazilian drama, always a favourite. Uh, the, the reality here is if you go and look at the public portfolio that's available, because remember they are a public traded company now, so a lot of information that wouldn't... Uh, ordinarily be in the public domain now has to be by by definition uh to protect uh, shareholders and meet market requirements uh well it looks like the the coach and the players that you know the core team they're they're all locked in until uh december 2021 um so where where this goes i i i don't know because obviously the cspPA um have sort of been involved and been advising players and, and listen yeah me and duncan have said the csppa was toothless why aren't they toothless on this or could it be that they've got this fucking danish 
you know, uh, uh, league busting strike action extraordinaire guy who also understands all of the nuance of Danish sports law. It's a little bit different when he's on his home turf than it is to say dealing with something internationally or dealing with broad ephemeral concepts for like North American teams. Um, but yeah, with, with Mads Oland and, and Zipniks have a very good relationship because they already had, before the CSPPA, they already had a, an esports division of a Danish uh, 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 sports players union. So, Astralis were absolutely shit in their fucking pants as soon as, like, you thought Mads, you know, Mads Oland is going to come in. My God, they're playing this music! You know, it's like, people were fucking going to panic. So, yeah, of, like, in, in this instance, like, I, 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 I think there's a realistic chance that maybe those players are looking for an out um, and, and want to get to an organisation where they're going to be... Yeah, that went and get to another organization where they're going to be more fairly uh, compensated for the huge sacrifices they've made. And honestly, who could blame them? And by you the know, way, as far as I know about the scene, they can get that if they want it. There are big orgs out yeah. there who not only would take these players, even by the way, with some of the you know dodgy results they had the last few months, it doesn't matter. People, like the star power of that team's name, the fact that it's the greatest lineup ever, the fact that they're yep. so young and could be, revitalize their careers, not only would a lot of people gamble and take those guys for a lot of money, but he, as you're saying, there's some of these orgs out there that have the money and the setup, but not the players who would treat these guys like fucking gold compared to what these wankers in Astralis have treated them like. That's why I did that tweet the other day, because I also wanted to appeal to the fans. Like, cause, like, here's where you know that there are some sane people in the world. In the same way as, yes, obviously loads of TSM fans attacked me over that fucking Lena thing, but there was still a surprising amount who would say shit like, you know what, I've been a TSM fan the whole time in League. I even used to hate Monty and Thorne, but I have to side with them on this one. This is fucked up. There was yeah. actually some people who were cool enough to be like, yeah, this is fucked up, actually. Like, even though I'm a Danish player or I'm a fucking Astralis fan, like, I can't, I, I can't abide by this. So all I say is this. If you're an Astralis fan, you can still like those players. But, like, wouldn't you like them to be in an org where when you cheer and go, yes, I love Astralis, not Astralis is the name, I'm talking about the players, you know that you're also not then contributing to absolute arseholes who exploit the same players. Because the key thing, I made this point on Twitter and people missed it until this was basically proven by our article. When you stand for Astralis, the org, you weren't on the side of the players. You were against the players. So yep. if you're actually a fan of Astralis, cause of device and glaive as it, you actually have hurt those guys. You have potentially put them in a worse situation and trapped them from an escape by doing that. So listen, <laughs> you know what? Even though we were telling you, all right, you get one strike on that one. You can come back from it. If you, as long as you turn your shit around, you just behave reasonably. But if you keep doubling down and you keep standing for the all, you're just evil at some point. Another source as well told me, funnily enough, I don't know if you remember the posts that like Dupree and, and uh, I think Device might have put one out as well, where it was basically showing frustration and they were saying like, listen, we know we're not the same team now um, and people need to understand that our results are going to be poor and you have to adjust expectations. Apparently the org weren't happy about that. Fucking hell. Because mm. well, it makes sense, Richard, because that's not their PR strategy. Their PR strategy is never to admit there's a fault. It's to spin mm. every really bad thing as a brilliant new thing. Yeah. So, um, well, not just that, though. They are in the business of manipulating every positive, well, every piece of information about their org into a, a net positive because their share price will be affected yeah, by a run of bad fuckery. headlines. Exactly, yeah. So if you've got a player coming out and saying... Listen, guys, like, uh, we're not the same team. We are going to lose all our games. If you're a shareholder, you might go, well, this fucking sounds a bit defeatist. Fuck this, actually. I might start selling my shares. This sounds like it's about yeah. to bottom out. If, if people don't know, like, what that concept is, it's just called market confidence. And if you yeah. know anything about how financial markets work, that's literally most of what makes stocks go up and down. That's why, okay. famously, if you make a load of dodgy statements, like a certain guy who runs fucking electric cars and the stock price goes way up, you get investigated by the SEC and you probably get fucking punished. Like, because you are not allowed to fuck around. Like, it's not like now if you've got a private company, you're just saying whatever you want. You're now fucking with other people's money and you could go to, you could go to do prison time for that in theory. Mm. So, you know, th that's where we're at with Astralis currently. Now, funnily enough, Casper hasn't got back to me about doing an interview with me. Of course uh, did you, did he, Casper? Yeah. <laughs> 
You're, you're pathetic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're pathetic. Just go on, like, fine. And that's the show, guys. Bye. <laughs> See ya. I'm done. No, all right. Fair enough. Uh, good one. Um, but yeah, the uh, he, he has he has ghosted me. He hasn't got back to me. Um, and and, I, and I'm, I'm saying, I'll still do the interview, but you better believe there's going to be some, like, all the tough questions. And yeah, you better come correct, because I've got the receipts. So I'll know if you're lying, so don't bother. And I'll and I'll say in the interview, yeah, you're lying about that. I don't fuck around. Like the the, the truth matters to me, not your share price. You know, not like that's just how it is. So we'll see. There's gonna be some follow-up stories anyway. So what whatever. Right, let's get into this Brazilian drama. Madness. <laughs> Madness. Some um, lies do just repeat again and again, don't they? I know, yeah, it, it's unbelievable. The genius of this one though is this is what everyone's missed that made this one even more beautiful. Is right. normally it's a Brazilian team versus a non-Brazilian team. Mm. Now it's Brazilian Civil War, and the maddest detail <laughs> that I don't think anyone's given them credit for is mate. We, I was actually wrong. I used to think because immortals were equally as stupid. In fact, in certain cases, more with KNG and some of the stupid ass shit they said and some of the lies. Mm -hmm. I used to think, right, it's just the whole Brazilian scene. You know what? I apologize for that. The Furia guys are sound as fuck. These guys understand professionalism. It's actually yep. amazing. They're showing up. The veteran guys were supposed to be the role models for them. This is ridiculous. It's just MIBR, the ones who were just going mental. Yeah, I mean, let's let's give a summary of what happened, right? So, and 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 you might need to correct me on a few details because I've been I've been doing paperwork and oh. fucking packing, and so I only I only caught this tangentially. I didn't even see the incident with my own eyes, but I caught all the subsequent drama and was reading about it and watching the Twitter uh, responses. So my understanding is, Fury and MIPR were playing each other. Right, and there were uh, uh, MIPR had been having like lag issues, and uh, you know they were complaining in the first place. I think about even having to play on the servers that they were uh, playing on, right? Uh, and then there w there was an incident on Vertigo, was it, or was it in the sorry Inferno, where Fur uh, basically dropped in a round after damage had been done, and obviously Furia went on to win that round. Uh, so. The, the prescribed, well, the rules, fuck the prescribed wisdom. The rules are, if damage has been done in a round and you've had initial contact and then there's some lag or somebody disconnects or something like that, right? You, that you play out the round. Uh, it, it, it's, it's always been like that. MIBR complained and people are saying fall and drop too as well. So apologies if we've missed out that detail and that's accurate. Uh, but anyway, so MIBR complained uh furia were under no obligation to restart the round but immediately because it's mipr it was pure 100 percent corral hole people went on twitter people were like trying to apply pressure and so furia basically made the magnanimous gesture and agreed that they would restart the round the games played out and then afterwards mipr still complain with fur who's made negative headlines just a few days prior to this which is we'll talk about in a second uh wh where he said furia you are shit uh and kng uh if KNG i remember... has to get in of course you just knew yeah. that was coming I, don't... <laughs> I, I i think what kng said was um you what what was it uh, you didn't want to restart the round, but but were pressured into it, pretending to be good people on social media. Irony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you had somebody ghostwrite your fucking apology <laughs> to protect your career. All the while, while while this has been going on, to be fair, Furia have handled it pretty well. Now, I never would... won the fucking game. Yeah, yeah, and one of the games. Yeah, they're so they're such assholes as winners that they do this. Yeah, um, so like you know, listen. First of all, the shift in the balance of power in the Brazilian scene—it's not even theoretical anymore. It, Furia are the best Brazilian team, and yeah, it's not even thing close to mention, by some distance. Yes, Furia lost to MIBR in the best of ones in Blast. But what people might not know is the last four best of three series that they played, Furia had beaten MIBR. So if you think that yeah. didn't play any role in this, and then on top of that, that every time MIBR asks for one of those players to join, their org just tells them to go shove it up their ass. If you think that didn't set the scene for why there's so much resentment, of course it did. Yeah. 
So, uh, gotta say, like, uh, my, my respect for Furia is, is probably at an all time high. Not only are they getting it done on the server, and not only are they the best team in Brazil, uh, they are actually, they're sort of beating MIPR at their own game. You know, they're like, they're, they're the ones that are getting in their heads. They're the ones that are like, okay, well, we'll restart the round. We'll still beat you. No big deal. Um, so I absolutely love the way they handled this. And once again, MIPR have embarrassed themselves in public. So there's loads of uh, uh, follow-on things to, to talk about. Loads of little spin-off storylines. And Fallen's just come out and tried to like defu defuse and yeah. cool everything down. But what you also have to remember is, and it's I don't, I don't even think this is a secret anymore, MIPR didn't want to have this like string of players that they've been bringing in. They wanted to get the star players from Furia. Why do you think it was important they had those five, very public five-year contracts locked down? Because the buyout was phenomenal, even for the Immortals group who just pissed money away for fun. Um, that that was hugely important. Furia, basically, they stonewalled Immortals. And if you know with like how MIBR have this like relationship with like, yeah, and we all know Fallen is the godfather of the Brazilian scene. In more ways than one, is that label appropriate? Um, uh, the the reality is not not only did Furia stand up to MIBR and said no we're not selling our best players to you just because reputationally you're the bigger organization they have now built a team that eclipses them not theoretically but actually and beats them confidently every time they play them even when they run fucking game like this and basically cheat which by the way I thought only pussies. <laughs> did you know wanted to win no matter what I, I i remember a guy saying something like that yeah mibr will fucking scratch bite claw and kick just to get a fucking round in a game that you can't even close because you're fucking dog shit what a fucking embarrassment you have become like don't like how do the mibr players actually get up and look in the mirror and go i'm, I'm happy with what i've turned out to be like fuck me what well, it's it's embarrassing meanwhile fury just loving it yeah we'll just keep beating you We'll just keep we'll, we'll we'll just keep going to tournaments. We're beating Team Liquid. We're winning events. I mean, they Fuck lost you. this one, but yeah, generally, I, I yeah. Oh that. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. But, but but again, think about all of the drama and all of the headache. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, imagine losing and taking all that abuse, and then having every fan in your country go and kill yourself. Like, no, cheers. That that's fucking awesome for them. Thanks, mate. By the way, that's the other thing, right? There's a lot. Obviously, there's a lot to unpack here. So, like. What we'll do is maybe we do the whole thing about, like, the admin decision and stuff separately. Because I'll just say on that one, like, there's a lot we can get into there about the history of, like, how admins do decisions and all that shit. All yeah. I'll say is this. If people wonder why I waded into this, because I noticed a lot of people were thinking it was really unfair, right? Because to them, what they think happened is MIBR has this drama, and they think I've just come out for no reason. And just, just being like, right, you should all hate MIBR because they're all cheaters. No. What happened was... Another detail is this. Not only did Fur do that tweet, he then went on his stream and was fucking wiling. He was just going oh, off yeah. on motherfuckers. Yeah. And so yeah. when I saw the transcription of this, someone translated most of the things he said. Part of what he was saying was stuff like that, you know, they every tournament they'd ever won, they'd done it in an honorable manner. And that, you know, wow. he, would he would never do these things, right? Like he would never like take these like sort of cheap role or some, you know, that was the gist of it, right? So my point there is it's like the Astralis point. Listen, yes, other people, in fact, most players, if they can, bend the rules as far as they can. It's like every fucking pro sport. Every little tosser pretends they were fouled every time and they never committed a foul and they all try to lie about who kicked the ball off whose leg and all that bullshit, right? But the difference is this. You don't then come out and go, I should also win Sportsman of the Year. I'm the fucking coolest guy. That's, it. That's when it's egregious. So if you say it every time you ever won was with honour and that you wouldn't do these things, and I, with my own fucking eyes and behind-the-scenes knowledge, know you have literally cheated in the rules, sometimes in key scenarios like end of game five of a fucking epic series you won, I'm going to go ahead and say that. I get that you might think you're bringing up old skeletons. He brought up the skeletons by fucking referencing the past in a yeah. disingenuous manner. So you know what? I don't want to have to do that. I even made a tweet afterwards where I said, you know what? I don't even like doing that because I actually do like some of these people's people. They're actually cool guys. They've just got some fucked culture in their, in their team where you can just lie about all this shit. And we're on this one issue. It's only this issue. They'll cheat in every other manner except literally with hacks and stuff. They'll cheat in every other manner. But for some reason, this one issue, they do have this like, 
precedent that they've set that you have to just violate the rules of the admin society and let them decide in agreement with them, which is so bizarre. Because if we want to get into that part of the discussion, the part I don't get is this. Could you imagine in football, right, there's a, a foul and the ref goes, mm. actually, uh, we're going to play on. And then the team that was fouled goes, what the fuck to the other team? Like, that should be a foul. And then the other team goes, yeah, you're right. Actually, you know what, ref, bring it back. It's a penalty. But what? Yeah. What, what yeah. sort of madness would that be? That's what literally happened here. And that's what they expect to happen every single time. Hence why the, the th craziest part of history to me is not just their own incidents are doing it. Like, like I'll, I'll give them one, one piece of credit. They at least did do it themselves to Fnatic in that clip that Fallen hints. But that's not something obliged, as we've said. They, obviously, it happened to them famously with Hiko in the fucking Team Liquid versus Luminous yeah. game in one. But the yeah. one that people forget is the infamous Pussies quote. That was where Fallen wasn't even fucking playing the game. And he had the goal to be like, they shouldn't do a, they shouldn't do a restart, even though this motherfucker didn't have a noise-canceling headset on. It's like, you're just pushing it too far now, mate. You, you, this is unreasonable behaviour. Yeah, but it's on it's on record, right? Which team <clears throat> got penalised, right? At ESL One Cologne in 2017, who, who had some of their prize money took off them for breaking the, the rules surrounding timeouts? Oh, it was SK Gaming. Yeah, right. It was it was you guys. So you're one of the few teams that are on record that have been penalized yes. for for fucking actually breaking the fucking rules. And by the way, like I've I've seen that happen with more teams than just MIBR, as I alluded. Oh, to. of course. But here's yeah. the difference. When you get penalized like that, that the point of that is that usually implies you don't just even do it once. You were probably just doing it repeatedly. In fact, they probably even warned you and said, stop doing that. If you do that again, I'm going to have to penalise you. And you just did it again. And eventually they were like, right, well, I can't let it happen like five times in front of me. Listen, mate, if you're going to cheat, do it twice and do it when I'm not looking, you know. But this is what I mean. So one of, one of the things that they have always used, right, they, and they know they do this. So I'm just going to say this. I know you don't watch the show anymore, Fallen and, and, and Dead and all the, all the guys over there that I know and, and I, I, I consider myself to be pretty tight with. I know you don't watch the show. I know you don't like what we say about you. But here's the reality. You have, you have used the culture of fear around calling you out because one tweet and it's just non-stop corral hole. He goes still... You know, if he was still playing our game, he's never going to Brazil, not even on a fucking holiday. You yeah. literally ruined you his fucking... saw life. this. Yeah. That fucking sponge. By the way, yeah. sponge and Lord, yeah. I believe Lord has yeah. even predicted like they'd win the game or something. Like, whoever yeah. it was. So someone even like predicted a reasonable thing. And all the fans even then were just saying, like, you know, up your ass. Like, by the way, I've told everyone this a million times. Notice how the insult is always, you're homosexual, <laughs> literally. And I don't mean yeah. that as a joke. Like... Why is that the listen, guys? This is 2020. That's a really bad angle to keep taking. Like, you don't want to do that with like Western media. But also, I will say, I always think that the one saving grace of Brazilian fans is this: one, they're dumb enough to tweet at you in Portuguese. I don't know Portuguese. So I don't click that button. So problem solved there. If anything, that's a good arrangement. Just tweet some shit. I don't know. And secondly, if you ever actually do translate it. That language doesn't translate very well with like Google Translate, Rich. It always comes out mad messed up. And so as a result, it makes it amazing because they won't just say like, go get fucked up your ass. It'll be like, you should have a pineapple up your ass, like a point. It's like, this is fucking amazing, actually. It's like yeah, no, magic no, real. No, I love it. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same, mate. I, lo I, I love clicking on Google Translate so I can try and be like, well, what the fuck does that actually mean? Like, what it's is the like, phraseology? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's always like, what the fuck? No, but it, there's loads of languages where it's like, you know, they, they are basically just telling you to go get fucked or something. Like, uh, you know, yeah, or stick something up your ass. But it's like... The, the specificity of the language makes it this like Mate, absurd, uh, just, brilliant. Just because people it. will appreciate it. Moses yeah. loves this. He always brings it up. The best he loves language... the pineapple up his ass, does he? Well, you know, he's a poet. <laughs> Didn't want to say why he did shave his head for, you know, for the culture and that. But no, the thing, right? There's a mad thing where we just found out from Yanko that like Serbian is the language that has the best proverbs and fucked up yeah. white sayings. Because they have sayings. The one that we never forget because it's too insane is it's something along the lines of like, the gist of the message is right, you know, when there's like a prime opportunity in front of you, seize it. And the way that that idiom is phrased is like when the donkey's stuck in the mud, fuck it. <laughs> Which is just amazing, isn't it? Like, the idea you're... Like, mate, people make fun of most people saying the sheep shaggers. That's like if you were just saying about yourself, like, we fuck the sheep. Like, never, look at, never look a gift sheep's ass. And they're like, give me a break. Like, in the ring. Yeah. 
Uh, that, yeah, that that's unreasonable. Like gr Greek, Greek is because I spend a lot of time out in Greece as well. Like Greeks, another one where there's just so many outrageously specific insults. Like I remember, like uh, like uh, we were like playing fucking me and my boys were like playing FIFA or something, and uh, my, my boy Mackie's like fucking screaming at me. Like first it's all agami, agamiso, agamiso, you know all that shit, oh. and then he, and then he said that sago skito to kolaraki malaka. He fucking lost his mind, and it, it literally means I will fuck and. Tear your arsehole. Like, like why why throw in that additional why throw in that additional detail? Yeah, like what excuse me? Like, excuse me, sir. Like why yeah, it, like ridiculous, ridiculous. Um so yeah, you know, those those insults are straight bagging. Like I do I do love to read a good Brazilian insult. But obviously, as I said, they they leverage that culture of fear around calling this team out, and they've got away with like I I I, I think it's no exaggeration to say that core the uh, of the fallen rosters down the years has probably been one of the most egregious examples of any team cheating since 1.6 Na'Vi, yes. where cunts were literally ghosting, kicking PCs under the table. I'm going to the of the arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you need a reset? <laughs> it's just so unreasonable, though, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't even leave anything to the imagination, for fuck's sake. I know. Unbelievable behaviour. How bad were you uh, beating him in FIFA? Fuck I know, hell. exactly. Your rings oh, gone. No, mate, we, we we used to get into those games. They were oh, money games, mate. North, yeah, oh North, yeah. North scream, it. Yeah, those were money games. I he he was a legend. Like he got fucking he hey, he uh he had a job as a uh like um car park attendant. So he would like, you know, he, he would just sit there all day in a little security booth yeah. in a multi-story car park. And he tricked out one of the monitors and like what some wired it up to his PlayStation. Right, and then he <laughs> no right, no no right, and then he moved, he moved all of the cameras right, so he could see if his supervisor or his bosses were coming in. That's and he would, Why is yeah. he moving the cameras? So, so he he would so not watching the cars or nothing, know, you know, I'm just right. watching the entrances. And he would sit there, and he would he was he would take a bong. He would take a bomb. He's a legend, I can't Right, lie. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would just sit there and play PlayStation all day, high as fuck. He used to have his mates come and sit in the booth with him and play fucking games <laughs> on a fucking like black and white CCTV. Yeah, imagine TV in. Oh, my house to be Nick. Can we check now? Listen, mate, it's half time. Can you give us five minutes? Like, can you at least <laughs> check the cameras? Sorry, mate. They're all pointing at the office. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he, he got wrecked. He got caught. He got he, he got fired for that because like uh, the boss suspected like something was up because other Some people had said that. Green, yeah, the booths fucking stuff the weed so he did like a full stealth in like he was like uh and, and went through some super secret entrance and just caught him like red eye eyes like what fucking fuck? sheep's cunts like <laughs> playing and he, he just said i'm fired aren't i he's like i got me so yeah. like uh. so yeah good times um but anyway um so yeah I, I think i think this team like to have the fucking front to talk about anybody cheating or not giving you a fair deal. Every pro team should fucking stick it in on you and fucking break it off, honestly. Because it's like, you, you, the amount of other teams that they've done it to in the space. And it's always the same argument. It's like, when we do it, it's gamesmanship. We're under no obligation to, you know, to, to, to give you a chance to win. Why should we look at the rules? But when when the when the spirit of the rule can be invoked, oh come on! Why wouldn't you want to be fair? Why wouldn't you want to? You know, so it, it's always the same fucking arguments with these people. Um, further, uh, I'll I'll actually no. Let's do the discussion about admins first. Yeah, all right. Um, it, it's it's mad because I think on the last episode we just talked about this and how admins basically defer decisions to players. Yeah, you're right. It was a Patreon question. Yeah. Yeah. And well, here we are, prime example. And and at no point, by the way, should an admin ever come to the team and go, "So, what do you guys want to do about it?" Like, it, it's 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 ridiculous. Like, absolutely not. That should never be a factor. That should never be a question. It's just, what do the rules say? This is what the rules say. This is how it's this is how it's going to go down. So, I mean life imitating art immediately but this is an ongoing problem like uh, you know i'll give credit to esl uh in general like esl 
do have a very firm hand when it comes to the rules, you know, and, and they've had like official tournament admins. And when other tournaments maybe don't implement rules correctly, those people will speak up and say it probably should have gone down like this. By the um, way, just to give them credit, because obviously people think I just hate yes, I'll lie about them. never yeah. lied a single time ever, by the way. Everything I say was totally factual. But one thing I'll give credit to ESL for is they're actually one of the only ones in 1.6 who sometimes at least enforce those rules. Because I also remember another famous incident where when Na'Vi were the reigning IEM champions and they played the final the next year, I think I've got my time, I'm right, it was the second year, not the first year. Mm. Zeus just went to the fucking toilet when the final was supposed to begin. They fined him 5% of the prize money. Like, they really just showed, yep. like, we're not going to let you do this shit. So, listen, they didn't always do it in every case. I saw some fuckery there. But that was back when everyone used to let the players get away with it. So, fair play. They have, in general, been an industry leader in that regard. And also, this is another thing I want to allude to. If people haven't seen, in my opinion, the best, most authoritative take on how admins currently and should deal with this exact rule was from the main admin of ESL, which is a guy called Michał. So it's not with a C, yeah. it's a Polish name. And he's this guy who's pretty well known as a head admin guy for ESL. And he makes a very good point, which is actually that the problem with that rule, basically, is that it's always only applied by admins in the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law. Because the spirit of the law is this. It's that... You only want it to be that you can restart the round if nothing really affected the round. And so we can just recreate those scenarios. The reason mm. why they made the rule initially, like if any damage is taken and then you disconnect, is because, listen, I know you all have this naive idea pros would never cheat. I know pros who even would probably admit to me privately. If they didn't have that rule and I was losing a key round and we'd taken damage, I'd just pull the RJ45 out the back of the fucking PC and then put it back in one second later and just reconnect where my yeah. lagged and I'd just take the round. Like, listen, sometimes you have to qualify to a major, boys. You have to do, do what you're going to do. So I, I understand why they made it such a hard and fast rule, but he makes the point that actually even the rule itself isn't perfect. Like, for example, in 1.6, like, I had Laguerre on Flashpoint Q the other day. He even admitted, like, yeah, we used to go even further and look in, like, configs, and then if we lost the game, we'd just go, actually, he uses, like, a bind that's illegal to jump, so we win. Like, they, they really were right. Yeah. Well, one of the ways they were abusing this exact rule... I don't give a fuck, man. I'm not going to Germany yet. Like, one of the ways that they are actually ridiculous is he said that because this rule technically just said if no damage has been done, you can request a reset. That cons yeah. were doing shit like stack in one site and then if you didn't go to that site just saying yeah can we have a reset actually and getting a reset so it yeah. actually it's not even a perfect rule but as you can imagine you, this is what we're getting to now what you need in these rules essentially is the rule needs to be sort of like a, a firm guideline but then you have some king solomon-esque motherfucker who goes right i'm here to interpret the spirit of the rule and so i'm gonna I, here's the scenario in this case it doesn't apply i'm sorry in the other case it will be applied like you need nuance basically yeah, and and I, I, the the thing is, I don't even understand though. Like, like why why did they feel so compelled? Like after the fact to call out Furia. Like Fallen's put a thread out today. Like you say, try to defuse the situation and you know br br cal calm it all down. I and choose say, to like, live my life as a Brazilian. Man. <laughs> yeah. No, he's saying. Um, hang on, I'll I'll, I'll read it to, to you. I'll have to do some translate. Uh, but basically, he put out like some pictures uh, of, of him, you know, hanging out with like the Furia players. And, <laughs> all you know. still mates. He's literally yeah, an yeah, all still he, mates. yeah. He's in an all still mates. He has, he has. <laughs> uh, I, like I'm, I'm sort of reading it. I'm having to translate it. But basically, he says like. In, com in competition, victory is everyone's goal, uh, and we will always do our best to go out and get it. Yeah, uh, I bet you will uh, fall on that fucking yeah, team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and we also try to make the game fair and be friend friendly to our uh, uh, opponents. Uh, for this yeah, reason... Oops. <laughs> yeah, for this reason, in times of strangeness and some controversies, I just want to congratulate and thank all of my opponents, especially the boys from Furia and other Brazilians for raising the level of competition. Um, so, he, you know, he's, he's trying to be diplomatic and he also says this statement um, is, is from all of the team. And, uh, you know, sorry if things... I don't know if it's from KNG. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to put that... Yeah. Listen, I have no reason to believe it, but I'm just speculating. I don't think KNG was like, yeah, you know what, Fallen? Uh, add with love for me as well. <laughs> like, I don't imagine he was even consulted if I have to get... Yeah. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, it was just a, it was just a weird one. Fur's been going off lately. Something doesn't seem to be right there. I don't think he's happy with the way the team is because mate, mate, he's one yeah. of the best players in the team at the moment. And obviously, they don't. Oh, think of course. That well. I can I can imagine he's frustrated. By the way, that's also what's hilarious is your contrast. Remember, it's, it's only the next day. So day one, you are shit. The next day, yeah. different team, mate. I'd just like to say from all the boys over at yeah, we love you all, <laughs> and uh, thanks yeah. for everything you do. <laughs> We, yeah, we, we, we lo love you. Uh, see you for drinks tonight. Uh, but you are human feces. So, you know, like... And by the way, we will tear your assholes. <laughs> XX, all in the gang. XX, 23 plus one. Um, so yeah, like strange times. But yeah, first seems to be, you know, because I... I I don't even Holy necessarily... Holy shit, I've just realised, by the way, that is... A, yeah. that, we're lucky that there's no one from Greece that's big time in CS, because that would be the literal gang war level attack. Is oh, mate. You had trash talk between the Greeks and the Brazilians, because if you said, I'm going to fuck your ass and tear it up to a Brazilian <laughs> of all people, oh, that would be the end of the... That'd be worse oh, than I'll kill you. you. You will bite the bullet. You will be biting the bullet. Straight it's just a phrase. Like series, mate, running across the yeah. line. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just a phrase. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I didn't want to bring this up, and I still don't know if I do. I don't necessarily want to commit it to the podcast because I've said in these like times of like cancel culture and. Oh, I don't want them to get fucked over and fired and stuff. Like, for example, when I saw that shit that Fur was saying, that saddened me because I know that like, mm. listen, it didn't happen, but. Mate, there's a world in which if, if Reddit had cared more, they could have fucked that guy's career. Luckily, as you as you pointed out, I think, they didn't translate it into English and it was kept fairly low-key and people didn't really go crazy about it. But yeah, that just that whole incident is like, mate, you're going to ruin your whole career doing this. It's like that thing I've told people and people don't believe me because they're idiots. When KNG tweeted the shit at me that got him essentially fired eventually, I instantly DM'd him and said, listen, mate, we yeah, can ban it all this. you yeah. want, but do not say shit like that. Like, it's not, I'm not telling you that, but I'm just telling you this is not going to be received well. And he literally uh, came back with one of these, like, but why does you hate us? Like, right, all right, mate, you, you, keep, you keep going with your strategy then. There, there are multiple <laughs> players uh, that I have messaged, uh, like, over the past year or two, uh, as, as, you know, we're starting to see the sort of, you know, this weird cultural uh, uh, quicksand uh, that people get dragged into. And, um, you know, people have, like, that, 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 was, that was players with, like, things in their bio, you know, that everybody can see. And you're like, fucking hell, mate. Like, that being there is is bad. Like, you don't yeah, want to... the classic one, if everyone knows the reference, and I won't say it, is what Zeus's knife used to be called. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's just in, indefensible. Of so, course, yeah. yeah. That's just indefensible. And that's already on the record. Yeah. People could go look that up. Yeah. I mean, it's important, because let's fucking let it lie, but... That, that's the sort of shit that, like, is, I mean, luckily you just play now, but that would be the end of your career if, if the wrong person got hold of that. Yeah, and, and this is what I mean. It's like, you know, the, the, it, so, so, some, of the, some of the older players are coming from a very different internet time where certain... And not certain, American culture. Yeah, yeah, and, and they don't understand. And, you know, like, I don't... Some of it's, like I said, some of it's indefensible, some of it's not. Some of the people I've messaged, like what I've done for a few players as well, is I've done the thing that they don't think of, um, is uh, they, they don't search their tweets. And like advanced Twitter search is the weapon of 2020, of right? So if, if, you, if you have to have a Twitter account because you're a public figure, like, and you've had it for 10 years, you can't remember the shit you were saying in 2010, but let me tell you, Twitter was a lawless place, and people were saying crazy shit all the time. Do yourself a favor, run all the bad words in the, in your advanced Twitter search and delete all your old fucking tweets. I mean, ideally, delete all your tweets. In an ideal world, don't even have a Twitter account, frankly. But if you're a public figure and you need one, and you've got some shit to sell and it's part of the job, you know, I, I've gone through and said to players like, yo, you tweeted this 10 years ago. If anyone finds this, you're fucked. It's not archived. Get it deleted now. And and they go, oh, holy shit, yeah, thanks, man. Because it's like, you know, I know I know them as people. I know they're not bad people. I know they're not, you know, 
uh, half the time it's completely divorced from context because everyone else that they were tweeting at's been banned. So it's a snippet of a conversation. And the way tweets used to work, you didn't have quote tweets or anything back then. So they could be literally repeating somebody else's tweet to them. And and, and that, that original tweet is gone. And so it just looks like they said it apropos of nothing when of course it, that so there's there's lots of fucked up shit there. But yeah, basically, I mean, look, I, I understand if you're an MIPR, there is a high level of expectation, uh, both behaviorally and uh in terms of what you deliver on the server. But like these guys have got to realize like the direction you've been heading in, like Fur, you got to get your shit together, mate. I know you're frustrated, but it's spilling over in outrageous ways, and it's just unfortunately there's too many eyeballs on you. You're, you know, you whether you want to accept it or not, you are a role model. There is a behavioural expectation, and you will fuck up your career in 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 the world we live in now if you keep behaving like this. Equally, fallen as as like an older veteran. You shouldn't be lighting a torch paper between a notoriously, uh, um, you know, explosive fan base and, you know, younger players in the scene that you might still play with one day, by the way, having them all fucking getting attacked and, and, and burnt out. Like, you just gotta, like, you just gotta do better than this. Like, this, this entire scene is like a fucking fiasco. And it's the same names coming up over and over and over again, doing this, like, ridiculous stuff. And I'm saying that as, like, a guy who's like, listen... Yeah, we all fucking, you know, we all get one every six yeah, months. We all get one every six months where you say something outrageous or you do something egregious or you have a temper tantrum or you make a bad tweet or you have a bad take. All of that's forgivable, but this is like a sustained problem now. And it's just like, just get your shit together on the server. I mean, like the, the new player they picked up, TRK, seems to be a pretty good find. Seems like they could actually like start to improve and 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 do better on the server but like this this was just so fucking needless or all, all of this drama frankly and also just to reference because people again will get lost in the fucking weeds on this when richard says that the things that we're talking about are indefensible that's the mm. point we're not defending it like no. i don't have to i'm not saying someone didn't commit a crime if you say he has to have life in prison and I say, well, couldn't we just do 20 years and, you know, with good behavior, get time out. I'm just saying be reasonable with the judgment. The problem I know is this. It isn't going to be me and Richard who get to judge these guys. It might not even be people in esports. It might be yeah. some fucking cunts who will just go and put pressure, if not on MIBR, on MIBR sponsors, MIBR's investors. There could even be political pressure in the fucked up world that we live in. Now. Yeah. You just don't want what that's going to yield. Like, it's going to be literally way, like the, the punishment will be way worse than even the crime. And think about KNG, like finally just sort of clawing back his career. Like he's good at the moment. No, exactly. He's in the he's in the best form he's been in probably since he joined MIBR. And you're getting involved in these like stupid arguments. Like, brother man, you were fucking like he still got me blocked on Twitter from the fucking first time he fucked up. It's like, listen, like just get your shit together. Like you're back, you're back from the dead. You're in your late twenties. This is it. This, this is as good as it gets. If you want to go down and sink your fucking career again over some bullshit drama related to a fucking timeout or restarting a fucking round, like, mate, you've got to fucking see the big picture here. The, like, the, the next time you tweet a threat or anything that's homophobic or anything like the next time you do it, you're gone. You're out of MIPR and you'll never play in the top tier team again. And, and, and that'll be it. And you'll be left scratching your head, like wondering what could have been. Could we have won that major? Could oh, we have done this? I'll, I'll even say this. This is why it's so disappointing to me that we're even in this position again. It's because I remember seeing in some of my videos like a year and a half ago, this guy's career is probably done now. Like he probably never will be. Because remember at the time, the logic mm. was, Noah Winston had even said when he was involved with the Mortals, he will never yep. play for the Mortals again. So it's like, right, well, you're done now, aren't you, mate? No second team wants you. And if you can't be in what then became an RBR, well, you're fucked. So the fact that you got that second chance please fucking take it yeah exactly and, <laughs> and 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 despite all of the stuff that we fucking you know said have said about you and all the stuff you've said about us and all the stuff you said about duncan we actually are pulling for you we want you to take the second chance and do well like obviously we know what it's like when you know one mistake hangs over your head and and has a huge ramification on your career and i would even go so far as to say probably my mistakes you know, I, 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 I guess almost on a par, right? I mean, you know, he went looking for somebody, somebody went looking for me. Sure. You know, I can completely empathize. But, you know, you 
you, you have to take the chances when when they're presented, and I think this is like they're on the edge. I might be are like they they are perilously close. Some of these players to completely go in over the cliff, and and some of them won't get to come back. Uh, See, it's and for, Richard uh, hasn't even fucking attacked any more alliance players, so you know reform is possible. <laughs> I, I think about it all the time. <laughs> uh right anyway so th that was the uh that was the brazilian drama in a nutshell um there was, there was there was an event there was a couple of events that we should probably talk sure. about uh i'm keeping one eye on the clock making sure uh we don't uh go too long today but the dreamhack uh spring masters or the dreamhack masters spring for europe and na finally completed it to, completed on the 14th of june so four days ago and some sort of interesting uh, stories that came as a result of that. I won't go into too much detail, uh, but we'll start with the European one. And the big talking point right off the bat is that big, actually, with a with a top team. Uh, it's they amazing, won. isn't it? Isn't that crazy? Like, no, I mean, talk about the fucking online era of CS being weird. Like, I, I, I thought this was just a shoe in for G2 when the final came Agreed. rolling around. Yeah. You're like, you know, great, great job, G2. By the way, we'll talk about it in a second because they're, they're number one in the world right now. Um, but what a mad fucking series this was. Like, and, and let me let me tell you, the the way G, the way big won this against G2, it, it's like a legit win. Like, uh, you know, G2 had the uh, they had they, they had, had the advantage. yeah they had the one map advantage going into it because they came from like the upper bracket or whatever however the fuck it worked yeah. they won they won the first map so they are two zero in in the series like they have now got three chances to just close this out um, and big beat them on nuke uh, sixteen five comprehensive uh g2 and you you know it's it's one of those ones uh not not to worry dust 2 comes rolling around you probably would back g2 maybe on that no another another comprehensive win big 16-6 so you go into mirage and this this the deciding map out of fucking everything and then big close it out in overtime so what a mad fucking series and as i said what a legit win for big this is like this was such an... Un I mean, it's an unthinkable run they had at this tournament, but the way they won that final is like... It's it's probably their best performance since they had that mad run at Cologne. Yes. I mean, the thing that's interesting about this move to me is this is actually an example of where... Listen, these results are out of nowhere, but the lineup that they have now is one that literally people in the German scene were seeing to make years ago. Like, if people don't remember, when they got Smooya, when the people heard behind the scenes and publicly, Smooya's a bit of an arsehole, people just said, why aren't they recruiting that Sirison guy who's on alternate attacks? He's yep. actually a good German opera. And then, obviously, this fucking Keto guy was also on the same alternate attacks team. So all they did, basically, is got rid of Nex, the infamous fucking choker, get rid of Smooya. I mean, Smooya got rid of himself on that one, but you know what I mean? Got And actually ended up with a better opera, it looks like. This guy's a... Sirison's a fucking banger, mate. Like, he's been coming on year on year, strength to strength. So... The the crazy thing is, listen, I'm with you. A lot of this is the online era. I'm sorry. It just is. Like, there's no pressure in this final. You're not on a fucking massive stage. You don't have people like Keto going, well, I've never been in the Giants. So they're just playing the game, right? And at the moment, you're even in the world where everyone knows upsets are wild right now. Even if you win one of these online tournaments, you can come last in the next one. So you feel like, hey, everyone's in with a crack. But I actually look at this squad and there is something here. Like, when they go offline, I don't know that they'll be, a, like, a team at this level. I don't think they could win an event like this, but they could be a top-10 team. Like, if you look at who they've got, Tabson's really fucking good again. And if yeah. it, what was interesting was, I bantered him the other day where I basically just said something along the lines of, like, you know, you, you don't have to stay in big. Like, you're actually allowed to leave or whatever. And he basically mm -hmm. replied, I mean, he's German, so he didn't understand yeah, so the concept of humour. He was like, you know, it's not compute. And just, <laughs> just reacted, literally. But his comment was fair play. He just said, yeah. basically, like, yeah, but like, essentially, the gist of it was that, yeah, but I performed better in certain environments and, you know, I wanted to be in, like, a team like this. So I thought, okay, that's cool. Sirison, like I say, is look fucking banging. And then, let me think, what else have they got in that team? And then, obviously, Zantares on the internet is a fucking... Is Jesus from Turkey? Like, we all know that. He always has been. So, yeah. actually, they've got not a bad team. Like, And the other thing I'll add as well, because I had Laguerre on the Flashpoint Q&A the other day, and one point he made that they always did in Big is... Because obviously people know when Big had that famous Cologne run, they like the famously they had like the second best utility 
behind Astralis, which was crazy at the time because Astralis were like revolutionizing the game. Well, the point he made was in big, they did essentially always gamble on the long term that we're going to try and play the most proper counter strike you can, which means in the short term, you might take loads of losses. And when you have players like Zantara's initially, Smuya, it's not going to work necessarily. These players maybe aren't cut out for that style of player. But the point is, if you ever nail it down, then the, what's amazing about that style is you can win over teams that are better than you because you have mm. all the tactics nailed down. You have everything that they're going to do nailed down. You know exactly the timings, how to follow each other up. You're not just having to play like geniuses off each other like fucking FaZe Clan tries to do. Like, So there is something to this team. I say, you know, as long as we're online, props. Yeah, you did good. It's just that, listen, I have to be a skeptic till I see it offline. I've seen it happen too many times in, in CS. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just add as well. I mean, like, so uh, a guy that never gets uh, sort of sort of any credit, they they got a coach over there called Toby. That is a uh, old, he's like a one point six dude from from way back when. Um, and but but they also moved. You know, God B has been in the job now uh, as like the head of development for CS:GO for about six months, and here we are with yeah, here here we are with two German talents that we were like. Come on, man, that's a hell of a climb down. Like, Sizzen looks insane. Like, I mean, I know people were saying you should pick up that guy from all the attacks, but I always thought that the, the intimation there was if you give this guy a shot at the big time, he'll fuck it up. Um, but the reality is, like, you talk about taking an opportunity, and I, I know God B's, like, very, because obviously I'm good friends with Fatty from way back when. He's, uh, which is really his name, by the way, before people, yeah, like, okay, now you must really be good friends. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can, he can call me that now. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, like I, I go back with him. I, I know he's very hands on with this team. I know I know he is absolutely fucking, you know, in in the mix with what they're doing. So yeah, listen, there's so much contingent on which Zantares turns up to the yeah. LAN. Uh, like that that is hugely important. But the difference now, I think, is. Where before that was always the factor, and they were super reliant on Smuya. They've actually got three players that theoretically can do the heavy lifting yeah, in the series exactly. now. They've got Tabson when he goes off. They've got Zantares, whichever one he he turns up, or or or, or Sison now, who was a legit player that can take over a game. And let's be clear, he did it against G two, who yeah. are a team in the ascendancy, and ha they're a team that have a very good tactically. They couldn't shut him down in this series. He was like absolutely popping off so so I, i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what big do at uh um the the next la at a lan when, whenever one of those is going to come rolling around but i also add just to talk about g2 for a little bit i do think they choked a little bit in this one i, I think um you know i i'm right in saying they'd beaten big earlier in the tournament right yeah upper bracket final yeah so the 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 reality is they had a very good run and look destined to lift this uh, trophy and i think that got inside their heads a little bit there's there's something there about g2 where right now they are a very very good team but they do have these like weird mental mental blocks you know not just like forgetting to defuse the bomb and stuff like that but they do seem in pressure situations to maybe struggle a little bit and and i've also got to say mate i don't like it just generally i listen i know the approach in general of the g2 org is you use like humor as a fucking healing salve and you know you banter yourself before they banter you and you make it so it's like you know it takes a sting out but when, whenever I hear players do that, it's like when Team Liquid used to choke every game at 15 rounds. It's like, when you keep saying it long enough, that's why they call it a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, you will even be thinking yourself when it starts to happen. Oh, fuck, we're not doing it again, are we? Like, every sports psychology person would tell you the opposite. So don't think about it. Don't bring it up. That was a, the past doesn't define the future. You know, every, all these comments he'd say, like, it feels like they almost, like, go into these games just waiting for something to go wrong. Yeah, totally. And th this, this was, like... You know, like I said, I think overall, over the course of the tournament, up until this final, this was, like, a, the, the best I've seen G2. Like, their run to the final is legit oh, as sick. fuck. Yeah, like, it started on day one, where it's, like, I think they lost to North, like, back when it back when it uh, first started. That, that's, like, almost a month ago now. Yeah. But um, they... After that, they had like just an insane run. You know, they beat Astralis. Yeah, we know it's not vintage Astralis. Still, whatever. You got to overcome that core. They beat Navi. They uh, obviously beat Big in the upper bracket final. Like we talked about. I'm sure I've missed out a another result there somewhere along the line. But like, they just had like legit wins and looked destined to lift the trophy. I, I think 
the the fact that they've now like become the number one team in the world yes there's a lot lots of stuff going on at the moment that factor into that but i think i think that's like such a mad it's achievement cool, for yeah. them yeah it's such a mad achievement because when I looked at the top four teams, if you would have asked me which one was going to break away from the pack, push Astralis down out of the top four, and uh, you know maybe maybe attain the number one spot, I probably would have said Fnatic or maybe Phase. G two weren't in my thinking at all to become the number one team in the world. You know, Navi as well. I probably would have said, although they seem to be having problems, which we'll get into in 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 in, uh, in a second. But yeah, this was like this is such a mad achievement for them. Like they, they might have they might have lost this final, but I almost think like becoming the number one team in the world. I'm pretty sure Ocelot and and maybe even the players will be like. This is got this to take that to heart. That's legit. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's such an insane achievement. I made this point. Like, I've just put out a video before we did this show, which just, just happened to be ready then. So after the show, watch. Don't go watch it now. Obviously, keep watching the stream now. It'll always be there waiting for you. But the point I make in the video is, like, yes, it's online, and yes, you know, there's all this weird shit where they lose the finals. So it's weird to call someone the best when they never actually win any tournaments. Mm. But like on aggregate, you have to call them the best. If you actually look what they've done. They've only had, like, one slip-up, basically, the whole year. Yeah. So I feel like they've been straight mustard. So as a result, like, yeah, you should feel proud of that because think about where they were after that last major, where Shocks leaves. You think, right, with Felix, they're fucked, aren't they? And then they have to do this move where they buy half of crazy. That's a mad gamble. Like, if you remember two years ago when they made that infamous lineup where everyone hated them because they kicked NBK and they got existence back in, they brought fucking Smiths out of retirement and turned out he still wasn't, he was still a fucking corpse, but whatever. And they were shit. Everyone was memeing on them. And everyone was telling Ocelot, basically, just drop the French team. You'll never do it with French players. Like, they're all fucking washed. Obviously, then they looked like fools when Vitality came up in their wake with the kicked players they'd had and had success and got to number two in the world. So the idea that they would eventually get to number one without just going and buying the Astralis roster or something is actually amazing. Like, say what you like about Ocelot. He has done a fucking banging job as an owner. I think this is three different big games he's taken a team to number one in. Yeah. Yeah, it's no joke, man. So, um, su super happy for them, even though they didn't close it out. But again, I I'll, I'll temper that by saying I do think it's a little bit artificial. I don't think it'll come. If they keep playing, they'll get one eventually. Mm. Oh, yeah, they'll get a tournament win. I, I, I think that's a reasonable uh, conclusion to arrive at. But the, once we get back to lands and we're on that run to the major and stuff like that, I, I, I think G2 are artificially high right now. And uh, um, Yeah, but that's the cool thing as well. Now you mm. can even say they've got a chance at winning that major. They're in the mix. Oh, that's yeah, for cool. sure. Well, I think we already called that, didn't we? When when yeah, when true. we when we thought it was going to be on the date it yes. should have been last They're month. Looking I think, good at online at the beginning of the year for sure. Yeah, I think we said G two were dark horses to maybe uh, take it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the other thing we'll talk about here is uh, we'll we'll go into Navi. Uh, Navi, the team that I declared as being <laughs> legit and ready to be the number one team in the world, and finally a team around Simple, that means they're going to win endless tournaments, and they're ready to dominate, and all the other hyperbole that I spat out there as a pundit, hasn't quite worked out like that, I'm not going to lie, didn't win this one, <laughs> not my uh, not my finest hour. Yeah, but the crazy thing is, like, they, they are like the ultimate Jekyll and Hyde team, because oh, they'll still, mad. even in tournaments, have a series where they'll bang someone out completely, like there was mm. obviously that one against Mad Lions, where Simple was yeah. like, right, you just aren't allowed to win this game. I'm just going to win it myself. But then yeah. afterwards, they'll just have another series where it's like, what, what even is this team? Like, this, this team's terrible. And so the problem is, like, that's what's going to hold them back from winning tournaments, isn't it? It's they can't even keep it consistent in one tournament, unfortunately. Well, the, the series that stood out for me over the course of the tournament, obviously, was uh, uh, the the lot the two zero against Ents. Which, listen, I know Ents are supposedly, well, I mean, all of a sudden the results speak for themselves. They are a different prospect to the sure. dog shit team that they were. And all it took was bringing Jampion to the fold, it seems. But, uh, like, they, they Ents lost to, like, Nip. They lost to, like, Vitality. These aren't great teams. There's no way that Ents should be winning against Na'Vi 2-0, even with Jampion. But they, they styled on them, and they did it on maps that Na'Vi should be probably beating Ents on. You know, Train, Dust 2. These are legit maps that Na'Vi can compete on. So, bit weird uh, that it went the way it went. And I know Simple was, like, mad deflated. He put some t one of his tweets out where it's like you can tell he's tilted to fuck but he blames uh it's all me i blame myself it's like 
Yeah. And you go look at the stat sheet, it's like plus yeah. 700 killed everyone who died once. It's like, yeah. I yeah. shouldn't have had that one death, lads. I've got to take it on my own shoulders, you know. I've got to be better. It's like, don't, listen, you're not actually Jesus. Can you just fucking stop? Why have you gone from being toxic to completely the other way around? Where you're like, put all the world's burdens on my back. <laughs> Give me a break. But um, there have been there have been some consistent problems in in this uh, team, uh, and it's basically it's like there is always a player, and sometimes two. If we're being honest, like go watch the series against Fears. That's in my mind where uh, uh, Boomich and Perfector were absolutely like abysmal. Uh, but the, there's always a player or two that seem to go missing in these big series. Meanwhile, Simple Electronic, you know what you're going to get with them. If Simple has an off day, Electronic generally picks up the slack. But Flamey, Perfecto, Boomich, they, they they go from like having a great series to having like a really, really poor series. And you can never predict who's going to like maintain any level of consistency in this team. Also, as I want to add, I think it was The Blast uh, did a clip yeah, where... I've, I uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, where their comms are a fucking shit show. It is like literally like I, I, all I could imagine while I was listening to it. Well, apart from the classic NA, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, like just idiots, like just screaming all the time. But like, it just reminded me of like what what I imagine. You know when you see them clown cars where like fucking five hundred clowns come out the back, like, but they're really tiny, and that's the joke. It sounded like you know them arguing over who gets the fucking you know, to pick the radio station or something. It was like, it was, it was insane. Like, I can also say as well, by the way, when I was at Blast on LAN and I could listen to the comms, listen, I obviously didn't listen to Navi much, I don't know fucking Russian, but the occasions that I sometimes tuned in, it was like that the whole time, basically. Like, not every yeah. single round, but like, you would be amazed how messy their comms are. Because they, they just live in that world. Like, they get, that, that must just be the chaotic world they're used to, mate. Like, as far as I can tell, they don't think it's even a big deal. No, but that, that's the thing. Imagine, and this is what I mean, it just shows you as well, by the way, how, like, fucked the culture in that uh, squad has been for a long time. Because the first thing I would do if I heard that, like, I'm not even talking, like, if I'm a manager, if I'm a coach, you know, whatever my fucking role is, like, keep in mind, they've got Blade over there, somebody you think would understand the importance of, you know, communication, being very clear, not panicking, you know, you think he would get all these concepts, but what, he's allowing that? Like, if I hear that shit, that's an immediate timeout, like, what the fuck are you doing? Shut the fuck up! Because it was, it was just unintelligible gibberish. Like, nobody can tell where people are. If you've ever seen a round from Na'Vi now, where you're like, well, surely he should have known that guy was at the top of mid, or surely he should have known they were flanking him. No, they can't hear a fucking thing because everyone's just screaming about what's happening on their screen, like constantly. It actually it's, makes it, it even more insane. Simple's just fragging out all the time. Like they're yeah. just screaming it. Is. Like, yeah, it is ab it's absolutely ridiculous. So there is still so much to do with this team. And, I, I, and I've got to say, um, like I, I, I expected better from from Blade. Like I thought he would have a much more rigid system in here. I don't know if he's like too afraid to tell these fucking players to chill the fuck out, or whether it's like Simple's the one doing most of the shouting, and and which, which wasn't true in the clip I saw, but might be true in general. Like maybe he's like too afraid to tell them that. But like they have got to sort their shit out because. <clears throat> They've got a roster that's unbelievably good right now, and it is falling well short of expectations because they they aren't doing the fundamentals. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on that angle because here's the difference, right? I'll contrast it with another team I also referenced when I heard the comms, which is that G2's comms. Maybe this is because they were still a newer team, I don't know, but their comms were pretty messy as well. Like, it was people just talking constantly. But the difference was... They would, like, as as we just discussed, they're pretty consistent. They're like an elite team consistently. They very rarely do badly. So if you can do that, maybe you're just the weird team where you can operate that way. If you're Na'Vi and you have games where people completely disappear and make insane mistakes, and then we find out your comms are pure shit, we have to at least think about it and put it as a factor at this point in time. It's something you could fix. Yeah. Well, they, they, they've got to go back to basics. I mean, this is just a reality. Like this, I, I stand by what I said at the time they won Katowice. This is a squad that is ready to be the number one team in the world. They, in, in, in terms of what they've got going on on the roster, in terms of the coach they've got, in terms of the support, it's all there. All the pieces are there. Best player in the world, it's all there. 
right? But guys, like you, you are calling like mat, like Russian matchmaking, like that is embarrassing. But like you, you, your your owner should have come in and said, no, 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 we do not. When we can't have those clips go out, it is a fucking embarrassment, and uh, it makes me wonder how long that's been a problem in w within the the environment for that. Nobody thinks that that is like something that somebody should pull up and and say we got to fix this. Overall, though, uh, in terms of the results, like super disappointed with them again. They didn't finish particularly high. Where where, where are they at in the top ten ranking now? Let's have a look. I think, I think they're like, like six. Fifth or something. Yeah, fifth or yeah, six. six, dropped, six. Way down. dropped way down. And again, like I said, they're one of the teams that I would have earmarked to maybe fill this power vacuum. Yeah, you know, now that Astralis are down there and they're heading the other way. Like put it this way. If, if, if you can't, if you're Na'Vi and you're watching like Fury are ahead of you and FaZe and Fnatic and all and G2 with the number one team in the world right now, like how the fuck have you not seized that opportunity? Like yeah, it's, it's crazy, crazy shit. Uh, one other thing I thought we'd talk about just in Europe and then we'll move to the NA, then we'll do viewer questions and we'll, we'll piece the fuck out. Um, was, uh, hang on, let me just get the results up again. I got a results list. Uh, I did want to talk about NIP. And the kind of resurgence yes. that they've had lately, because I, I think this is an interesting topic. And we've talked a lot about the org and the scumbaggery. Uh, and when they picked up this roster, we weren't very flattering about it. We 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 said that we fi we felt like Twist was done and was never gonna be the player that he could be. They brought in Hampus. We were scratching our head about that move. Seemed to come out of left field. Uh, you know, question marks about Nork. What was he going to do? There was a lot of unanswered questions about this organization and, and the direction they were headed. Kind of felt like they were just kind of like spinning the wheels and having a team for the sake of it um, while maybe looking to sell or offload. But actually, this team of kind of like misfits has been delivering. Uh, they, they've had some very legit results. And if you go look at the results that they're pulling out of the bag right now, they're winning series that, w again, would have been unthinkable with supposedly the better roster. Uh, I, I know I didn't mention Rez there. I mean, I think everybody, I think his star player bona fides are out there for everyone. There's no question marks about Rez. I, I thought this roster was going to be like his purgatory, his personal hell. But in, but in actual fact, like Nip, uh, they finished fifth to sixth here against a very strong field, and they've really turned things around. They've got to give credit where it's due. Yeah, for me, I actually see quite uh, quite a few parallels between Mad Lions and Nip, like the way they've got mm. like a mixture of the younger players. They're, everyone fits the roles in the teams. They have pretty decent map pools. The one problem I think both those teams have is they have players like Nork, like Acor, who can have massive series and can look really mm. good. But then they don't have like a simple a Nico or a Kenny S. They don't have the guy where it's like every time there's a big game, this guy definitely will deliver. So that's the problem I see with Nip is like they're always in these games. They match up with everyone. But there are times where there's a reason they haven't won any of these tournaments. The reason they haven't gone like top three or whatever. Like, because when they get deep, this is where I think the inexperience shows. And this is where like it's the same in sports, to be fair. You've got to have a superstar. That's what superstars do. It's like the best way I heard it explained years ago was, yeah, obviously teams win the championship. But a, a superstar player can just win you one game. He can just say, like, no matter what, in this game, I'm just going to be the best player. I'm going to win this game. So sometimes you just need that on your run. And so I feel like for them... Let's just see if that can develop. Like maybe Nork can do that, give him a few more months. Maybe if he get offline, gets his feet under him. But definitely very promising signs. I'm very impressed with what they've developed. And I think like threat is like fucking coach of the year candidate at this point in time. Yeah, definitely. And I, I was going to bring it up. I think the relationship that he, maybe it was one of those things where, because I think threat did do an interview, didn't he? Where he said he was like part of the decision. When when they brought yes. Hampus in, uh, it, it, it it does make me wonder about that kind of like uh, 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 duality, like you know the kind of relationship they've got, the synergy that's going on there. The, the uh, like the 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 OG game th that they played at Blast, uh, where they uh, beat the one sixteen six on both maps, like that's as good as a, a nip performance as I think I've seen in a long long time, and I I, I honestly think they're on an uptick. Uh, they're really they're, they are a solid solid team right now definitely don't bet against them uh right so let's talk about then eh? uh less to talk about here uh a few interesting uh tidbits let's start by talking about evil geniuses the horror continues uh the the stanis law effect is still um playing out before our eyes um they basically lost to cloud nine and gen g 
Uh, and then who else did they lose to to finish dead last? I can't remember. But anyway, they they they, they ended up finishing like uh, rock bottom with chaos at seventh for eighth in oh, in, in, oh, in this I, tournament. Uh, uh, oh, they beat hundred thieves apparently. So right, uh, right. And it's just a, a tie for the third place. So yeah. they actually won the series, but whatever. Hundred thieves have their own problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so e e e g uh, rock bottom in their group. Uh, didn't do particularly uh, well at this tournament. And this has just been the story for a while now. It just seems to be like this is a team that's just out of ideas, out of shit. Uh, mad when you look at this roster. Yes. And you, they're not even in the... Uh, I don't even think they're in the top 10 no, in the world right now. No, it wouldn't be because this yeah. year, aside from EPL, that's it. Every The land mm. results are shit. The online results are shit. They sometimes don't even make the playoffs of these tournaments. And that's with, as you say, like, here's the craziest thing. On paper, Team Liquid and EG should have been the biggest benefactors of the online era because they're mad yep. fragging teams. And traditionally, they always took care of NA. So as a result, they're, they're trapped over in NA. They should be doing that shit of, like, fucking... Uh, like logically, right? Everyone should be saying, "Ah, oh, sucks for Team Liquid and AG. They can't play the top teams and show they're number one." No, they should be on some fucking Rorschach shit. Like, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in <laughs> it. And should just be body and fools. So that's why the saddest thing about this team is, mate. The number one thing everyone said about AG is the firepower. What firepower, mate? That firepower has fucking disappeared. It's evaporated. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just weird. Like you know, we we're questioning. Okay. Tarek would maybe be the move. He's never going to go anywhere until you force Stan. Oh, yeah, you know? I can tell you about that as well. Oh, yeah, go I on. can confirm it because Maniac, when we were doing Blast, when I used to do those, Maniac said, like, he was the guy who could listen to the comms. Like, I can't listen to it like we can on land because he was in the studio in Copenhagen. And he confirmed yeah. what I heard back in January, or February, rather, which is the problem is this. I agree. If you look in the server, just as an observer, you'd instantly cut Tarek. You're like, he doesn't frag that well. He's obviously not in playing like a key role. Fuck it. You've got these other young stars. Yeah. You've got the idea. Yeah. The problem is when you listen to the comms, he is doing loads of shit in the comms. Like he's one of the really key voices like, that helps those like younger players that sort of get settled. And, that. and as far as I can tell, he really is at times just saying, fuck it, I'll always be the sacrificial line. Give me the shit spot. I'll roll over and play this. Do you want to swap a spot? Like, so the problem is when you know someone's doing that, that actually suggests that even though, yeah, you might get a good upgrade, you're going to get a lot of problems will spring up with the other players if you kick that player. So I, I don't know if you can do it, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and and I've got to say, right now, I don't even think he's necessarily that decent far game. off the pace. Yeah, I mean, just in terms, I mean, as decent as EG get, but this this is the this is the insanity. Like, you know, where are the big performances from Breezy in these games? Where are the big performance? You know, well, like Circle have the odd map, sure. You know, but like, remember we were talking about how this core three of Cirque, Breezy, and Ethan were like god tier and and were rivaling. Uh, Team Liquid, uh, for, for terms of quality and, and, and deliverables, maybe even eclipsing them back when Team Liquid had their drop off. Oh, yeah. it, it's it's insane, like how those players have like just I, I don't know. It, it's so indescribable, like as to what's happened to them. But they just look like a shadow of themselves, and they are losing to teams that like real talk that like. I'm super happy Gen G have emerged as a competitor. I'm also super happy that everything I've ever said about Bentet has been proven to be 100% true and that he is legit one of the top players in the fucking world. And he never used a Krieg. So he gets even more from me. He said, fuck the Krieg. I'll wait till the AK comes back. And now he's banging everyone's fucking, fucking heads off because he is sick. Um, but I'm, So I'm happy Gen G have emerged from the pack. But like, there's no way Gen G should be beating EG. Oh, exactly. No, no way. A, this is also the nightmare scenario they're in. Is they're in one of the few examples of a team. It reminds me of Team, team Liquid had their slight drop off, except obviously it wasn't as bad as this. Who the fuck do you cut? Like, if you just know in your heart of hearts, if you cut Ethan or you cut Cirque, they're going to fucking go to a rival team, somehow revive their career and become so good, you're going to be like, why did I let him go? But the problem is when they're playing bad for you, you stock it. It's a lose lose scenario for you. You either have them losing your team or go somewhere else and become sick again. Yeah. I don't know what you do. I'm there. I genuinely don't know what EG does. But I mean, when you think about like, so wasn't it reported that it was a $3 million acquisition from NRG? Yes. I mean, fucking hell. We've called out some bad investments. 
Uh, I, I don't even understand what this is doing for the EG brand right now. And I also got to say, under this new ownership, I'm not even sure where the EG brand is headed. Did you see that pretentious shit they put out with the fucking logo rebrand they did? Yeah. Where they put out a picture and it was like uh, the classic. I mean, first of all, they did a logo rebrand where it was just a big V and it was dog shit. Right? And then they... So they had to rebrand, like, six months after they'd already rebranded. That already shows you it's a shit show over there. Like, the, the, and the, 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 there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Because once you've done a rebrand, you either have to stick to the fucking shit rebrand you did and just pretend it's good, or, or, or you just revert and say, yeah, we shouldn't have done that. And you go back to your... You don't have another fucking rebrand, another new logo on top of that. But then, to put out a, a, a fucking infographic explaining this was to your useful. audience, like, the classic circular... Like, I don't need to know the thought process behind the graphic designer, you mad cunts. As a fan of your org, I just need to look at the logo and go, yeah, that's that's good. It's like, in what world did you think that was a good idea? So you've overpaid for a fucking team that's underperforming. Your management are, like, so fucking clueless and tone deaf about what the fans actually want and what, what an EG fan is. EG has history. EG has pedigree. You know, e EG is a legendary esports brand, and right now it hasn't got any legendary teams, legendary players, and, and wanky, pretentious management. Like, it, it seems like... Bad times for EG, man. And I'll tell you what's coming next. Who, who's who's going to have to fall on their sword? I'm telling you, it's going to be the Stanislaw story all over again. He is locked into the same, like, you know, circular loop just with different players. It's like that Twilight Zone episode, Shadow Play, where, you know, it, 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 the, he stays the same. He's getting sentenced to death, but everyone else in, in the nightmare is a different person. And it's just happening over and over again. Like, he's going to have to go. Like, the coach is already gone. Like, you're running out of excuses. You're running out of a defense. Uh, so, uh, the other the other story, uh, MIPR. Well, we, we've already talked about them and their problems, so we'll just breeze past that. Uh, you did a video recently. Cloud9 aren't good enough. For the Cloud9 org is the key. Yes. Context. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, they they did manage to finish. What was that? Sorry. Did anyone argue against me? Uh, no. I mean, like I've 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 said how I feel about this team multiple times. They're barely in the top twenty in the world. This is a team that won a major in in uh, in recent memory, and all got won a major in recent memory. And I, I'll be honest, I don't think the players they've got on the current roster. I think you could work with these players and mold them and, and, and boot camp and give them coaches and give them sports psychology. Do I think you could do everything. And I think you maybe, at best, get the 15th team in the world. Maybe. Like Here's best. the way I would say it to show that it's not about any... Like I actually don't dislike any of the people in Cloud9's roster. No, all, all cool guys. I would just say way. it like this. If they played for Swole Patrol, I'd say they're a cool little team. Watch out. Yeah. They can do, they can get a little upset, but that's the problem. It's Cloud9. Like, and in a world where like we're roasting EG, mate, they're yeah. not even that much better than EG. It's like fucking hell. Like we're talking about monster orgs here. Like, as bad as Team Liquid's been overall, mate, their level never went below a certain degree. It was still like world class. So right mm -hmm. now, listen, I know obviously Cloud9 was waiting to see if Flashpoint comes along, and now they've been wait testing this lineup out, but I feel like eventually it's inevitable. You either have to sign enormous players. I'm talking like Nico has to join. Yeah. Or you've got to sign a new team. Come on, let's just not be silly. You're giving them the fair crack. They've had offline, they've had online. They're not even, by the way, even online, they don't fuck around and like win a tournament or anything. So it's like, where am I supposed to look for the bright spot? Because as you say, I've even seen development. I even see that like these guys are putting in the hours. So if you do all that and you don't make it, guess what? Some people don't. You, being a nice guy doesn't entitle you to be the world champion. It just doesn't no. for some people. And, and the one thing, the one, the one like bright spark, I think, out of this, because you're right. I've seen the development too. Like when this when this team was first put together, people were talking about the South African players and and what they were gonna do. But the development of Floppy, which by the way, it's such a ridiculous name. I say, so I'm gonna try not to giggle every time I say his name. But the development of Floppy is like a really. 
uh, solid <laughs> fucking hell, uh, player. Uh, it, you know, he he's like he's, he's like a, a real. <laughs> Keep going. Keep. He's he, he mate. He, he's developed into a legit talent. Like put oh, it this way. Bit, can I just tell you something before I forget? Because this is oh, yeah. Go on. Just as a random aside, no one noticed this, but I think it was I think it was either Maui Snake or fucking Launders who noticed this. Mm. Like when when Blast was doing all these setups and they've got webcams for everyone, so you have a player cam, right? When they were interviewing Floppy in the background on his bedroom wall, there's just loads of framed pictures of him. Like I'm not talking as a kid, by the way. Just like now, like like recently, like like some sort like he, like he's like stalking and shrine made a shrine of himself, like just behind him. I don't even know if he's done it trolling or if that's just like he's just a fucking weird guy. I don't know. Mate, like that that's some that's some legendary gangster shit. Like you gotta is, love it. Like, like, yeah. You got you you gotta love it. Like no, but um, I, like he, he's he's a funny dude as well. Like so, it probably is a troll. It probably is a joke. But I mean, if it isn't, it isn't. But you know, like le legit. Like so, all, over the course of uh, of this tournament, um, and just recent Cloud Nine series, he's had standout performances against the likes of EG, against the likes of. Yeah, hey, looks good. He had a fucking monster map against Team Liquid uh, recently, like where he dropped thirty against you know what ostensibly should be the best team in NA. So I would be, I'd feel really bad for him if, for whatever reason, uh, if Cloud Nine did go in a different direction and did pick up another team that he was cut and, and gone by the wayside. Because I think he's a legit talent. I think inside of a year he'll be, you he'll know, be maybe even this year. Summit. Yeah, I, I, I could legit see him being on a top team. Like, no yeah. joke. He is a good player. Um, so let's talk about the final. Uh, it was sort of similar, really. When Team Liquid uh, made it to the final, I was like, okay. They're still, you know, they've got a best of five against Furia. Should be a layup for them. Um I, I, I had Fury, of course, had the advantage, so they did start with a map advantage. But still, I, I, if I was to say anything, I would say, look, Liquid should have a deeper map yeah. pool and and and, and uh, are the better team. That's being real about it. But on, honestly, Fury had just wrecked them. Was wasn't even close. Wasn't even an interesting series. Nothing to talk about. It was another one of those series where twists had the nightmare. You know, we've seen that a few times um, from him in big games, which not 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 often. I still think he's an unbelievable player. But when he goes missing, man, does this team feel yeah. it? So it, it was it was a bit of a weird one. Like Liquid, I don't know. They've become very uninspired. I guess would be how I describe them at the moment. Yeah, agreed. I mean, they've been like that most of the year. I mean, listen, mm. they still won. I think I think they even won the fucking EPL or whatever. But like mm. a one-off online result in enough. You are supposed to, especially when everyone's just locked in that one region. You're supposed to just clean up. That's just easy pickings for you. It should be yeah. Uh, has hasn't worked out like that in in reality at all and uh you know just to sort of focus on furia as well for a moment i mean while while we've been in this online era furia seem to be the team that's absolutely benefited yes. the most i mean they they have got like we we were talking about this team being like they're good for a series they're exciting they are now at the highest world ranking point they've ever achieved they're up to fourth i don't think they've ever been this no, high no before and, and it's super close i think they got fifth one time um and it's super close. There's like 20 points difference between them and Fnatic. Maybe not even 20 points. And Fnatic a second. Fury are in with a real chance now of like getting into the top two teams in the world. Which again, there's all sorts of caveats and everything. But it's a legit achievement. Especially when you consider everything that's been going on. And it's been predicated on a few things. I mean, we talk about Yuri and Keserato. They are star players. Absolutely. But the two things that have been going differently in 2020 that weren't happening before... Henny, he's achieved consistency finally in his career. Isn't, like isn't it? Yeah. Well, he's always been a, an inconsistent player. He'll do a brilliant shot one minute, miss the next. But like his his numbers are legit. Like, and he's getting the kills in ways that he didn't before. Yes. There's actually been development there. You can you can see that. And then Art, who was a player that like. His style gets a lot of criticisms of course, and, and, yeah. and, and because of the sort of mad, demented way he plays the game. But when you start to look at it theoretically and conceptualize, in the past, yes, I think he, like that play style can be a liability sometimes. But, but he's doing things 
especially online where people still haven't fully adjusted to you know maybe people are going to chance it maybe people are going to do things differently like he he like there was one clip i saw of him recently where like he just literally from spawn like again like you were doing matchmaking against shitters and just went and pushed and pushed i think it was against team liquid and basically he'd already flanked them before they even had time to get a fucking flashbang out or anything like that the the, the guy has a very interesting and unique play style and it's working for this furia team right now he puts pressure pressure on the map he gets early information creates space for his boys i fear are back to being a joy to watch again uh, and a very unique team and they have took their development overall as individuals and as a team to the next level that they needed to be beating top tier teams like team liquid consistently yeah actually i'll do the same thing just on those two players First of all, I have to give mad props to Henny because I was always a very mm. critical person about his play before. And especially because not only was he inconsistent in the server with the fucking expensive gun, but he also, we all know behind the scenes this time. So he, his heart wasn't in the game way. He wasn't yeah, in the high eyes, very dedicated. So if you're up and down, I know you don't practice much. Yeah, fuck off. You're going to get called out for that. But he has actually, I don't know if he how, how committed he is now, but his game looks fantastic. He's literally hit his prime, like what, four years after he started as a pro or something? This, is, this never happens. You don't you don't wait till your fourth year of being a top pro to suddenly become really good and consistent, well-rounded. Like, this is a really, really crazy sort of what looked like it was going to be a final chapter. He could keep going for years now. And then on the art angle, I'm with you. When I saw this guy's style of play, I immediately thought, this is going to get fucking solved and when it does this guy is going off a cliff but the key thing is because he didn't listen to everyone who done that he's like mastered that style so it now reminds yep. me of like classic fur like these yep. jw like these are players where even when you do know that they're going to do some mad push somehow your brain doesn't allow you to figure out how they'll do it and they get away with it like they, it's like that fucking breaking bad cup he just keeps getting away with it like he, they just do and at the moment it is so essential to how they play the game but the the pro you see this is something that a, a, a lot of people don't really think about as a concept when you have a player that you know is going to do something you know he's going to do wild shit like let, let's compare him to Stewie 2K I think this is a, a, a very good sort of comparison like when Stewie 2K was the smoke criminal every smoke that was ever thrown down defensively by Team Liquid you then had to think about well fucking Stewie's going to come running through that and bang all our heads off and now you don't know when he's going to do it you don't know the precise timing is he going to do it at the start of the smoke the end of the smoke the middle of the smoke you know how many seconds am i gonna have to wait so you have to take a person and sit and stare at it because you can't stewie might run through it you know he's gonna do it but while that's happening that player's not looking somewhere else and maybe stewie isn't running through that smoke maybe he's done a long flank and he's already in spawn and now he's behind you the the prospect of having to deal with the pressure that art is going to apply can actually enable his his other teammates to go and apply pressure in other parts of the map and it slows that forces you to play a slower play style so if, if you are like a, a team that you're more about like rock'em sock'em and you want to play fast you can't do that against fury they're not going to allow you to do it if you play fast you're going to get caught with your pants down in like five or six key rounds because art's going to be all upon you so it, it's it's great what they're doing like and and i think we're at a we're at a situation where teams maybe don't give fury enough respect and they're not adapting their play style. They're not saying, right, we've got to, we've got to play slow because we've got Fury. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. I think there's a little bit of that going on. And that was definitely present when they had their first push. But this is a refined Fury. And it's it's crazy. when like We banged on them about the five-year contracts, right? Well, it's created insane stability and security in the team. Um, you know, I, I would, I would still would never recommend signing a five-year contract, but it hasn't been a problem, has it? I mean, we haven't heard any rumors. It's not like these guys would want to go to MIBR now. You know, we said in the past when MIBR wanted to pick them up, oh, the Orgs done them dirty by not sticking with them. Well, they're a much better team by, by a, a country mile. And, uh, you know, they're legit one of the best teams sort of in NA now, because that's, I think that's where they're based, right? They don't play out yeah. in Brazil anymore. So this is, this is like an insane story. And as you said, the, the, the difference is you've got a Henny who's dialed in. You've got Art playing this incredible, unique play style. You already had two legit players. And ever since they've replaced Abel, Abel J, Fury has just been on, on an uptick. It's like mad, mad props to this team for sure. Uh, right. Viewer questions. So, just in case you don't know, uh, we do have a patron. 
a, a Patreon uh, for this show. It's why we brought it back. Uh, what this means is that if you pay fifty dollars or more, you get to ask us a question. Could be anything. Uh, it doesn't have to just be esports related or Counter Strike related. So we're going to segue uh, into that now, and then we'll wrap up the show. So Jace. Uh, asks, should the Brazil major be moved to another country due to the current state of COVID cases? How long, theoretically, would a TO wait for 100% confirmation for a major? Tough one, eh? I mean, um, I'll just say this. Like, mm. I already had my own reasons I didn't want the major to be there. Like, I, I'm concerned about player safety anyway. Like, that they might... Like, I'm not even talking about just at the event. Like, like I, I have, we've made this point before, but basically, I don't trust ESL to properly inform foreign visitors about safety within Rio de Janeiro. I just don't trust mm. them to. Like, they don't know. I was basically told there's a favela right in the middle of the town that you wouldn't know and you could just walk through that area and you might just get your shit dusted off straight up. Mm. So, mm. like, that already concerned me. But then I would agree, even though I would definitely not claim to be an expert about what's going on in Brazil, it sounds like if you are very concerned about the current global situation in that regard to the coronavirus, that it's not one of the best places to be right now and definitely not to have people coming from all over the world. Yeah. Well, so we, uh, without making it too political and weird, we know that Bolsonaro is a bit of a fucking whack job and uh, his approach to the coronavirus. Like, I, I'm pretty sure he was quoted as saying, like, well, you know, you're a pussy if you don't dare go out. Like, I mean, it's just, just madness. Um, so... <laughs> Like, like, legit, like, uh, and you know, did the old well, how many people die in car crashes and all of that, like, argumentation, you know, like, you're still gonna get all those deaths. <laughs> this is a unique proposition. Now, the question is, will will the curve have like flattened by November? And if so, do do, do you then want to take the risk of, as you said, bringing everyone for a big gathering from all over the world, different curves, different levels of infection, different, you know. I, I I don't know if the the mage is still going to go ahead. November might even be a bit too soon. I was optimistic, but that uh, uh, like a month ago, but that was before the secondary spike that we're now seeing as a result of you know public gatherings, uh, certain ones being approved of, and other ones not, and we we're, we're getting a second spike here in the US. It's very very tough. Uh, the problem you've got is if you move it to another country, and you know you could theoretically have it in a place like New Zealand where they don't have any infections you the issue with that is uh, the the choice of where to hold a major is is vitally important uh and 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 all of the history and everything and and all of the fans and the teams that were going to attend all of that's a factor and i think it might, would probably be better to just not have it brazil deserves a major and that I, I want to see that happen. I think I'd rather wait, even if it meant, and you could do another rollover and make it a super major, like, you know, three million instead of two million, whatever. But it, I, I, I would probably rather have no major than have one in a country that's like small and it contextually doesn't make sense for Counter Strike. I don't know if you agree with that. Um, like, I know what you mean, but the problem is. It's just been so long since we've had lands. Like, I just kind of want to see a major. Yeah, I'm I feel like you. it's the only thing that could save this year. Is if yeah. everyone just gets to a major and we get to see all the massive fucking games. Oh, I, 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 and I, I, the I'd viewership love it. as well. The viewership, we could break all the records, mate. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I would, it, it's, it's so fucked up, the situation in Brazil. And it, it's just, it's, it's sad. But I guess we'll wait and see. Reykjavik on Steam. Um, What's what's a more disappointing and shit story, The Last of Us Two, or the Astralis Saga? It's mighty close. Um, all, all I'll say is, if I ever see Casper Vit wield in a golf club, then uh, maybe maybe we'll head for the hill. Sadly, he's inserted himself some places he didn't belong either. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Colja, who are notable pro players that are bad individual players? but somehow always oh, that are not bad individual players but somehow always make a team worse hmm oh that's a, that's an interesting question actually let me think of someone hmm. always make a team worse i'm pretty sure there's going to be some people let me see if i can think of a good example yeah this is definitely a you question need to get that rolodex brain out i always thought i mean like for me my go-to would probably be scream I mean, I, clearly I, it was a good player. Yeah, you're right. 
I, I I always thought Scream was like one of those for, like such a phenomenal talent and like pretty dedicated, but unfortunately was so sort of uh, committed to his one play style that when you put him in, he, he it would always be that situation where it, if he takes over the game and bangs everyone head off heads heads off, brilliant. If he doesn't, you're probably gonna lose. That was just how it always felt when you were on those screen teams back in the day. I'll, I'll give you one, but not in it's not in game necessarily, like his individual play. I'll say Smooya. Mm. Smooya seems to somehow just fuck the chemistry of any team he joins, even though sometimes individually he plays well. And as a mm. result, like the team's never going to be a top 10 team in the world if he's in it, seemingly, even though he has the skills to be in a top 10 team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're probably good shouts, both of them. They'll, they'll be other ones, historically. Okay, I've got one for you, maybe. Yeah, this is more of a reach, but how about Phelps? Every time he comes to the MIB Arts, what do you think? Right, this is the time. And then even though he is clearly good, it just never works. Who knows why? There's a mystery. He's he, he's playing mental now, though, and carrying his team. So if it was every I guess it's team. every team, yeah. Yeah, he definitely always makes MIB worse somehow. Um, but yeah, right now, like Phelps is playing like God take Counter Strike. It's actually unbelievable. He's in the situation he's in. Uh, anyway, Flacksmith asks uh, With all this talk about six man rosters, it seems many people don't remember Immortals tried to make a six man roster back in the middle of 2017 with the signing of Horvey. What happened in that situation? Were there any behind the scenes fuckery? Um, yeah, I remember this vaguely. From what I understand, wasn't it just like a paperwork snafu? Didn't they just fuck his visa or something stupid? Yeah, it was something along those lines. And I think it was basically, yeah, like they just couldn't get him there. And then I, I think it was only, I think this, from what I remember, I think this was when the Henny and Lucas twins, like, took a fucking stand for K and G. And we're like, we're going to remove ourselves. So IMT had to, like, quickly get someone. So they tried to get Harvey, mm. because he was only even coming in to replace And I think when they couldn't get the visa scenario, they just had to say, sorry, mate, like, it's just done. And they're like, you just can't join, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think it was fuckery, but there was there was like weird stuff going on over at Immortals at the time. It was like a really mental time for the team. Like KNG had put them in such a bad spot because what you have to also understand is with with the, with the KNG Ross, uh, you know, all the roster fuckery that went over on there. Not only did he fuck up and put them in an impossible position from a PR perspective, there was also all sorts of stuff relating to whether or not he could get a visa. I think he'd had a visa declined, and the problem yeah. is when you. When you have a visa declined under U.S. immigration law, you like you don't get to reapply. It's not like you keep going. You have to wait and wait and wait and wait for fucking years before the 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 slate sort of resets itself. You can't just keep putting it in every six weeks till they fucking say yes. So um, yeah, he had a he had a visa declined, and we we still don't know why. So yeah, immortals were kind of scrambling. I don't even think it was legit a six man roster. I think they just realized that that team was so volatile. They definitely needed. Some someone on the books to fill a gap because anything could happen you know it could hang over one minute pr disaster the next like you know it was it was a very volatile team uh kirk and pan what are some good books you would recommend fiction or non-fiction fucking hell that's an open question uh go on say the bible say the bible don't give you one just because it's to say it like i I got i'm one of those people where i like same with books and everything. I don't just read mm. the newest shit. I just read shit that's classic that I haven't got around to yet. So a series that people had recommended to me, but I have to say, I think it's actually not um, famous enough, is, right, listen, in, in sci-fi, everyone knows the big ones, like fucking Game of Thrones, and oh, I'll even say before the TV show, no fucker ever talk about that. Shut the fuck mm. up. None of you ever did. Lord of the Rings, fucking Dune, etc. Well, the series that I've just read that got up, I won't say where I am because consoles fucking spoil it. But I've, I've been reading a few books in the Hyperion series, right? And yeah. that is fucking banging. Like, it's nothing like I thought it would be. Like, I won't spoil any of it in any way. But it's one of those stories where, right, first of all, it uses that classic technique that you'll have seen in a lot of fantasy and sci-fi where you have a bunch of different characters in different places and you keep skipping between them. Kind of like Star Wars movies where it's like, right, just when it's getting to the excited part, you skip to another planet and it's a different guy, right? You can always tell if the writer's good if that doesn't feel awkward. If what mm. happens, like in the bad seasons of Game of Thrones, is you watching the straight fire part, then it's like, right, now let's see what's going on with Arya learning that shit for four years. And you're like, no, not this again. It bums you out. It never happens in this series. Like, you're actually interested in all the storylines. It's actually That's how you know it's like interesting and well-constructed. Because even when it would skip to the other ones, I would be like, yeah, this is interesting as well. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. And 
and like I say, it doesn't seem to have the status of some of those bigger names. So if you've never checked it out, I'd check out those books. Quite interesting. I'm currently reading. I won't recommend all the good books because you know you just go out there, you get that, you get all the classics. You you know. But I'm currently reading a book called The Golden Bow. I don't know if you've ever. Yeah, it's, ever isn't read this the this. one where it's it's syncretism? It's all like all religion in history, yeah. sort of like explaining the similarities and the archetypes behind it. It's by a guy called like George something. Like yeah, James somewhere. George Fraser. So go. I've been um I've been it's been on my shelf for fucking best part of two years never got around to reading it it's fucking mental it was like wrote in the 1800s and it's it's this guy uh sort of maps out all religious beliefs going right back to like fertility rights and human sacrifice uh moving into modern religions and then talking about how mankind is now segueing away from religion into scientific thought but the elements of all the mysticism mythology and magic is still prevalent in scientific thought to a certain degree the mechanics of it so okay. it's like su super fucking interesting um I'm, I'm on the bit where he's like talking about uh human sacrifice and he's talking about all these cults and like why why they why they were doing it so it, it, it's it's a fucking bonkers uh a, a bonkers uh, uh book um yeah it's it's really really interesting there's some classic shit out there where it's like you know you you uh it, it doesn't get enough uh, kind of like props because it's so old. People don't really read it, but this is like a legit book. This is like super interesting read. So that's what is I'm it, reading. Is it a tough read though? Like because it's that old. Uh, the thing is, it's like it, it's got a bit of the old like oldy English uh, language. But when it, when he gets going and starts talking about things that are just like mad interesting, like you know sun gods and you know fucking chopping people up to fucking appease the gods so your crops grow and how like it was a great honor for the motherfucker to like get on the slab and be like yeah they're cutting me up this yeah, is fucking brilliant thing people wouldn't believe it's because this is yeah. part of their culture the people who were like the shamans would literally train the person from being younger that this was like a like a celebrated role so as richard mm. saying when they murder you in like a fucking field as a fertility right to the gods they'd be thinking like oh this is brilliant even though they're yeah. being like impaled alive or some fucking insane shit yeah, yeah, they, they 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 were they were mad up for it. Like it was a great honor, you know. People used to be like, "Oh, well, I'm going to live forever." I know. The great. thing is, there was this guy, this Danish guy, who read this book called Casper Fit, and he was like, "Right, so what you can do is just spin everything really bad. Is actually a good thing." We'll no, I was sacrifice a couple of players for a fertility. Right? No, I, I was I was going to say, yeah. There, there's this whole chapter about this goddess <laughs> called Astralis, and uh, it's really interesting. Basically, you uh, you just keep on going until until you die. And uh, they have this, uh, like, shareholders' crops that just uh, grow, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> grow forever. And the shares did grow. Anyway, whatever. It's uh, it's a good read. It's very no interesting. Years, though. That's the philosophy. No follow yours. Yeah, no. And I think um, I because it's so old, because, like I said, I think the first edition came out in, like, 1890-something. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's free. It's in the public domain. So anyone, oh, okay. can, anyone can go out and get a copy of it. It's like... It is a mad, mad read. Um, okay, next question. Uh, Alice the Alchemist. Hey, Rich. Since both you and Thorin have been tenured esports veterans... Oh, one last thing to say. I'll say it what? just Go for on. banter, but also because it's legit. Right, Red Eye sent me a copy of his new book. And here's the reason yeah. I would recommend it. I'm not going to lie and say it's like the best book ever. Like It's, it's kind of like his slant on esports and story season. But this is the thing I thought you'd appreciate is, listen, oh, you all know how it is. I like to read it because I always just read it in his voice, obviously. Like, well... Sorry, Nobody's sorry, doing it. I was going to say, I got good news through this an audio book, man. Yeah, it's an audio <laughs> book. It's an audio yeah. book. Man. Yeah, oh, he, he's, he's doing it. I was he's thinking I could robotically enhance a This Is Red Eye <laughs> Christmas version and just sing it with his voice. Yeah, mate, I'm telling you. But yeah, he, um, shit, man, I, I meant to DM him. I, I've had my head up my ass recently. But he, he said, like, oh, what address should I send a copy to? So um, I am going to get it. Like, I mean, I had to put the Zeus book down. I'm not going to lie. I know loads Was of people bring it up. It's people not that, mate. It's written or something, isn't it? It's just, like, it's already one of those things. It's like Alan Partridge's fucking biography. It's like a needless to say, I had the last <laughs> laugh. It's like, it's like that over and over again. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, so but, but anyway, I win again. Yeah, it was like that. It was like that. It was. It was. It, it's. I was really, really and I'm only like two chapters in, and I'm like, I don't know if I can keep doing this realistically. Like, there's just too much stuff in it where it's like the almost abject fucking <laughs> lack of like re refinement. Isn't it narcissistic. 
yeah, there's that, but like just the daft things that I can't handle, like where he's like, <laughs> like, like no, I've already talked about it, like where he's talking about like, oh, you know, I went, I, 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 I'm at the hotel and they were pouring Johnny Walker black. I'd never seen the, only the finest stuff, and it's like four. <laughs> <laughs> It kills me. It kills me. Like the, the, there's loads of examples like that in the book already. Like, and they yeah, had a whole thing of Ferrero Rocher in the room. Yeah, I'm no, you it's what, like that. <laughs> it is. It is. It, he's like, and I, I was in such a good hotel. I said, uh, "Can I get mac and cheese with my with my steak? The only the finest food. It's like it's insane. It's like really insane, really insane. So uh, yeah, I struggle with that a little bit. But yeah, it's already like. Navi, it starts like Navi did me dirty and oh Jesus, you know, yeah, it, it's sort of there and like yeah, so whatever. Anyway, yeah, I, I do want the 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 red eye book. I'm looking forward to reading that. I, I'm going to be interested on his spin. Uh, Alice the Alchemist. Hey Rich, since both you and Thorin are tenured esports veterans who have watched a lot of tournaments, are you satisfied with the current formats explored by ESL, DreamHack, Flashpoint, and all the big TOs for CS? Is there a format that you guys have theory crafted in your minds that hasn't been experimented with or can be tried out, such as the most recent charity event gamers without borders, which tried the MR12 format? So I'll just go to my go-to. Pistol rounds are an aberration. They shouldn't exist in Counter Strike. Um, they, I, I, it's one of the things that when Valorant uh, sort of ported them across with the way that it sort of lifted. It, I mean, the economy is way more generous in that game, but it's still essentially a, a copy of the Counter Strike economy and its mechanics. Um, I, I didn't understand why they did that. I, I think you should just go straight in, buy rounds, MR12. You know, I know this sounds like we're moving towards like CGS MR9, but at the end of the day, it's stupid that six rounds can be decided just because arbitrarily we need to kickstart the economy. So I'd like to see a big tournament just say, fuck pistol rounds. You're just going to start with 10k. That's that. Here's the thing I don't get is there's a lot of areas where you can have like really interesting debate on both sides. I've never heard a compelling reason for the pistol rounds aside from we've just always done it. Like to me, yeah. they are the least interesting rounds because like what happens is let's say, I mean, I saw this happen like in a match today. I'm trying to think who it fucking was. Everyone who's watching all in the stream will know, but I can't remember who the play team was. It was some team on Nuke and they had two people alive with Glocks in the lower mm. site versus five USPs and they won the round. Now, here's the reason why that's shit, right? Is because you didn't win off tactics. You don't even win off that insane player. Like, you know, on pistols, it's just two people strafing left and right, just spamming at each other's heads. Like, what happens yeah. is, like, it's you don't win off the fundamental things that make Counter Strike Counter Strike. Like, out of nowhere, we all know someone with the USP, just three mad headshots and swings around. It's like, do I really want the game to be decided by that? Whereas, here's the thing what I would like if you had just gun rounds most of the time, not every round, obviously, they still have the economy, is. Then it becomes like American football. It's like, right, I'm on offense, right? Here's my set of downs. Here's my fucking chance to run the thing. Mm. And then it's like, it feels more like you get more of what you like about the sport in a sense, you know? So I would, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. I would just toss him if it was up to me. Yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely get rid of pistol rounds. I, I also just want to add the only argument I've ever heard about pistol rounds is from players and they go, well, it's a skill. It's a skill we practice and we have specific tactics for pistol rounds. But I'm like, okay. If we take them out, yeah, sad. But now you've got more gun rounds to play with. And like yeah, one, exactly. of, what, what, one of the biggest gripes that players always used to throw at me would be, you know, you lose 16, 12 and you lose both pistols and you're like, we want more gun rounds and we've lost the game. Like, well, let's just get rid of pistols and that's yeah, exactly. never an argument. So I, I would have thought most players would be in, in favor of it. In general, I'm liking that we're having this conversation about MR12 finally. I think especially if we're going to do best of fives, a best of five MR15 can be like so unbelievably yeah, grueling. I remember talking to Neo about this, I think, after he'd played in a best of five. And he said he always thought best of fives were stupid because essentially it always came down to the last map, generally, if you went and historically looked at them. Um, and there was no benefit to having the extra maps being played. And often they were very, very long series. And it becomes about who's like, who got a better night's sleep, who, who copes well when they're fatigued. It, it, you know, if a player like him doesn't like best of fives, uh, you know, uh, I think I think because they're so grueling, I think it's something we need to look at. And obviously, and so we are... people said to me, "Do I not like that best of five? <laughs> so uh, the other thing as well, if we are going to have a conversation about fatigue and burnout, we can definitely start by 
you know, not having a five-hour series to decide a final, sure. I think, uh, you know. So, um, shaving some rounds off, I think it'd be good. It would also bring us more in line. One of the ways we could lose viewers to Valorant is Valorant is, uh, at, you know, MR12. Well, the first to 13, is essentially, is it's same same shit, but you, you get my meaning. Um, that's how they always frame it. I don't think they use the max rounds language over right. there in, 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 in Valorant. Um, I've, n I've never seen it anyway. Uh, but, um, yeah, the, the, the reality is, like, short games, attention span, blowouts are over quicker if it's one-sided, less filler for casters. So you've got, you know, you've, you've got some advantages there. But, yeah, I think the MR12 conversations are valid. Uh, Smoker asks, what are the most frustrating revisions to Counter-Strike history that you see commonly being accepted as truth by the community? Ooh. Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. Ooh. Because the thing is, I actually have... I didn't actually write it up yet, but I did, like, sort of the initial, like, idea concept where I have something similar to this where it's going to be sort of, like misconceptions about history or whatever because obviously again my wheelhouse of things that people always seem to repeat that i'd never like understood what they were all about I th mm. things i don't know if i can find the notes here but i'll see if i can find like one or two to just see if i can uh oh yeah, I, found, I found a couple so i can give you yeah. a couple of them yeah um like a classic one you hear this all the time is whenever because obviously listen people will understand i was a fan of existence People tell me all the time, existence, all he ever did was lose to Nip. Well, he mm. lost to Nip at the beginning, and then he just smashed Nip a load of times. Like, that, that, that's not even accurate. Like, that's like yeah. you're making it sound like he was on a one-sided rivalry. You turned that rivalry on its head. Like, you actually came completely back. Another one, tied to the French scene, I'll give you it, but this is one you know is the case. When everyone says, it's all Kaylee's fault that Titan had to go bankrupt. What the fuck are you talking about? Why would that make them go bankrupt? Like, yeah, it might put you on a down year. Like, listen, Titan had plenty. Like, remember, they weren't even just in CS. They had plenty of other reasons to leave esports. Like, Kaylee getting banned can't be the whole reason they had to shut that whole org down. Come on. Yeah. These are, like, examples of ones where it's just, like, it's not even like people are lying. They just, like, only remembered half the story, I feel like. Yeah, you know well... Uh, no, uh, Kaylee was up there uh, because uh, a lot of people still say to me that, oh, you know, it's so sad that Kaylee killed the org with what he did and all their sponsors pulled out. It's like, that is a. Uh, you, they were already trying to fucking yeah. sell the fucking team behind the scenes, you mad cunts. They that were was already just a done. Convenient way to say we have to close the yeah, org. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, one of those. They were um, like, oh, no, shit. Don't never knew that. Have to close the org now. Oh shit! Like, give me a break. There's there's one related to the fanatic and and boost gate. Okay. I always the think it's interesting. One. Yeah, yeah. Where where a lot of people always say that like, oh, like fanatic were fucked out of that and and they, they didn't do anything wrong. I see okay. this argument come up a lot, and it's like, well, LDLC uh, went and cried to the admins, so. As somebody who was there on the ground and was behind the admins and everything because it didn't happen on the stage, they went into a fucking, you know, room. It was just not far from the press room and there was all sorts of shit going on back and forth and we were all craning our necks to try and see everyone what was, going was involved on. with that fucking as far as yeah. I know. Like everyone, like managers, fucking the orgs, the players, everyone was trying to play their case. So let, let, let me tell you what went down. After that happened and uh, the admins initially said, yeah, this is this is fine. They're not breaking any rules. So LDLC said, "We're out. Fuck this tournament. We're dropping out." Swedish Swedish tournament. Yes. Uh, Swedish teams uh, getting bias from Swedish admins. We're done. And then what? What? Like because remember at that time everyone said Fnatic were cheats. Yes. Uh, with the Flusher stuff, they were already such a mentally unpopular team. And now this had happened, and somebody went and told the admins about the famous detail people forget, that somebody had already made a YouTube video of this exploit in, in you know, being utilized, and JW told him, yeah, delete that will you and, and and they assimilated it tactically didn't tell valve didn't tell anyone and they sat on it specifically for that dream hack tournament but when when that got out everyone was against fanatic at that point right 
everyone was against Fnatic at that point. So they were like, holy fucking shit, this is going to make us look really, really, really fucking bad. Like, really bad. So they went, and they were going, oh, well, look, we, yeah, yeah, we've done we've done something wrong. We absolutely should be penalised. They were arguing to be uh, penalised by the admins because they didn't want to deal with the heat. The French players were super angry. There was a lot of, uh, like, a heated exchange, which is why, if you also remember the detail, they had to tweet of them shaking hands and saying, all still mates, which they definitely fucking weren't. Um, and then, I think retroactively, the way that the admins got away, got away with it was, they essentially said, oh, yeah, look, in this uh, uh, in the rule book, it says, what was it, like, a, a, pix a pixel boost pixel is wrong. wrong. Yeah, something like yeah that. So, so they didn't even get banned for the, the Olaf boost. Didn't they get banned for another no, boost? Got, around, yeah. People thought it was a pixel boost, but that turned right, out not yeah, to but be. It wasn't, what happened yeah. was, it was if you could see some of those textures, because you were up above the map. Yes, yeah, that was some, it. And even yeah. though that wasn't actually anything that we were using to cheat, it's just that's illegal like because technically yeah. I think on some maps you can do something dodgy if you can look into them so but, yeah they found out that they could do that basically yeah so yeah they went they dug into the rule book and found a technicality basically so the the whole thing with that is now people say like Fnatic didn't do anything wrong and it's like well they found an exploit in a map covered it up told no one used it to beat their opponents in an unfair fashion and then were basically just going to ride that victory out until they realized it would be an absolute fucking pr nightmare so i see so many people say like oh god the french did fanatic dirty like ain't like that at all like ain't like that at all and it's the one time i've actually seen a race uh, for teams to drop out of a tournament. I have never seen that before. And I, I don't think I'll ever see it again. Where it's like, you know, th like they, they knew if LDLC dropped out the tournament with that cloud above them, like they would have been absolutely reviled. And the, the hate they were getting at the time was really bad. Like if you oh, go no, ask Flusher, if you go ask Flusher and JW and all that about that, that's like some of the worst abuse I've ever seen CS players get. Like legit they said, death threats. Like. Um, somewhere, and I got JW to confirm it in an interview. This is crazy. People forget this detail. Because of what happened there, I believe it was like Crimson Olaf. It was like the newer players to Fnatic, not like the established ones. Mm -hmm. They literally were thinking about just quitting CS. And this is before they yep. had that era. So yep. we'd have never had that. Like they would have just literally said, right, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not being hated by everyone. I'm out. I'm just going to quit yep. CS. And there never would have been an Olaf Meister 2015. So, so it was a mad one. I actually wrote an article at the time saying Fnatic have no one to blame but themselves, though. So I wasn't exactly the most sympathetic here, and it's still something I stand by. I think it was a little bit underhand what they did, so there you go. Right, uh, last couple of questions now. If you had to, what Olympic sport would you enter into? I can imagine Sam doing the hammer throw. Maybe darts, Richard. I don't know where you got darts from. Darts. I'm, like, I'm, I'm like Mr. Fucking Magoo up here. Uh, in the Olympics? I don't think so. Uh, probably, like, must be. They're, all the shit sports are in the Olympics. Uh, and, and, uh, and he, and, oh, it does say if that's at the Olympics. So I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. Get my head pounded in by some fucking Cubans in the boxing ring, maybe. That, that, I, 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 I have like no sporting competency left mate, anymore. Wrestling is less aggressive, less CT. Yeah. Crap. Um, I, it, listen. <laughs> oh, here we go. What's he doing? The time stamp it if necessary, oh, but I'm gonna oh, make, it, make it funny. Oh, oh whatever then. I'll just like, nah, nah, I'll take a risk right there. Like, yeah. I'm gonna, is this? Nah. There's technically sports where you can compete nah. against people who aren't as able as you. So I just I'm out. cheat. Nah. I'm just cheating. I'm out. Nah. He's happen. doing the ringer. He's doing the ringer. <laughs> He's Johnny doing Knoxville. the episode of the ringer. <laughs> He's Johnny Knoxville. You know, I, I can't couldn't do pretend it. to be in <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, as I was saying it, I knew it was on the line. It was on the yeah, line. yeah, it's all right. Good it's job. Gone. You're learning. Um, yeah, so sorry if that doesn't answer the question, but uh, just is what it is. Uh, if you could, right, watch Dodge. Final question. I'm getting echo off you, by the way, Sam. Uh, if you could run any one professional sports club team, which one would it be? And what would be your first order of business? Acceptable answers would be becoming the president of Newcastle and forcing Mike Ashley at gunpoint to sell the club to someone who isn't an absolute melt. I mean, first of all, that would probably be uh, where I would go uh, with it. Um, it's like, I can't believe as well, we finally get a, a, a buyer and it's like, I forget which way round it is. It's is it Saudis, but it's Saudis who've done something like 
super unethical as it relates to the Qataris. And nice. it's like, it's like again, that's an example of the Godzilla quote, let them fight. I mean, like, uh, super unethical, human rights violating Emiratis in a battle for the soul of Newcastle. Like, I can't believe Qataris are coming out and going, yeah, them Saudis, man, you got to watch them. Like, hang on a fucking minute, are you serious? So, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Newcastle's got a ton of fucking problems. Like, first order of business. I, I'll, I'll be honest as well. I can't believe we've done as well as we've done with the shit squad we've got. And with Steve Bruce at the helm. Old Captain Squashy Nose fucking actually getting us, like, making us look good. But we've got no quality in the squad. So, I don't know. Obviously, the Raiders is my uh, NFL team as well. Uh, so, But I don't know what the first order of business would be. I'd have probably gone and got fucking Brady just for one season, just for one year. Go for that Minnesota Vikings, Brett Favre shit. Bring him in. Because I think, I think Derek Carr's a flake. I don't think he's going to get it done. Nah, he isn't. Come on. The problem yeah. with him is he's got that classic problem, which is the worst position to be in with a team. He's just good enough that you don't want to give up on him. But yeah. you, know he won't, you know he won't deliver. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's one of those. I'll do this. I'll do a joke one and then a real one. So the joke mm. one is I would take over this uh, industry-leading esports team called Astralis and just treat the players like human beings and be kind to them <laughs> and, and grateful good. for what they've done for me. Sounds a bit far-fetched. That's a bit fantasy, though. So in yeah. reality, what I would do is I'd do an NFL one as well. Listen, yeah. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I'm going to be a straight hater on this. I would just take over the LA Rams, and I would instantly trade fucking Jared Goff and just get a, just get just a, a competent quarterback. Because I feel like the salary and the fact that he's mad overrated, like that, yeah. that team should be so much better. They should have even won a Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. So like... I, I hate to see talent go to waste. Like, Aaron Donald's fucking amazing. They've got some insane offensive players. Yeah, sure, Gurley and them have sort of dropped off a bit, but they've just, they should just be every year in the Super Bowl, basically. So, like, whatever... Like, this is the thing in GMs I hate. Whatever GM signed that enormous deal, like, you're just a wanker, mate. You just ruined that whole franchise for, like, the next five years. So, I would just do that one trade. I feel like it would just make the whole league better. Yeah, it's a good shout, actually. I mean, I, I never got it. Like, I thought... Which season was it where he had, like, was it 2018, when they went to the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. So, when, when they had that Super Bowl run anyway, um, the, uh, like, yeah, he, he was playing well. He was, he was, he was getting it he was done. Doing his job. Yeah, exactly. He was doing his job. But, like, the deal that they signed, what was it's it? Mental. It was like. It's one of the biggest was, ever. Yeah. It was like four, four years, 134 million, something like that. With 110 guaranteed million. Like, that fucking... That... Oh, God, yeah, it's four years, 134, and 110 is guaranteed. Remember, yeah. the killer yeah. part is the guaranteed. Because guaranteed means if this motherfucker trips over, breaks both his legs tomorrow, you still pay him 100 million. 110 no, no. million. Holy it's bonkers, shit. isn't it? So, and, 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 and the reality is, like, since that run, he's, like, he's had some nightmare games. Yeah. He's, he's choked in some fucking... You know, unbelievable situations. Now he's only he's only twenty five, but uh, yeah, having like like let's like you say, it fucks up a whole franchise because of the way the salary cap works. If you're yes. paying somebody who's very average or you know above average, you know like greatest of all time levels of salary. So yeah, that's a really good shout. They got such a good squad as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and if you could add a couple of like tweaks to that which you can't because they don't have the salary cap room they they could be one of the best teams you know well they, they could be a super like you said a super bowl winner so so yeah good call right there we go that's it nearly turned it into an nfl podcast at the end but we we, we resisted the urge uh so shout out to all of our patrons uh, Jerky's Minion, Reykjavik on Steam, Kirk and Pan, Alice the Alchemist, Madams, there are $100 patrons, and our $50 patrons, Ben Akagi Assassin, Butt Pounder 420, Carve, Cathal, Colin Penny, Flaxsmith, J Dubs, Jice, Kolja G, Madsen, Marcus Kiumpa, Miss Alcoholic, Sard Sawar, Sigo, Smoker, Sunmade Raisins, TC Owens, Tobias Bernasconi, Watch Doge, and Zinged. Just a reminder as well for the sponsors over at com. Click on the panel below to find out more about the live streamer betting to learn how it works. It's a new thing they're doing. But basically, if you've got a favorite streamer and they're playing a game, you can pick out pop-ups of action that's going to happen in the game and bet against it. So uh, it's, it's a cool new thing that they're doing and it's uh, unique to their platform. So go look into that. And of course, thanks to all the people that tuned in today, all the people who gave up their subs. Uh, much love. And I'm going to be on the move. 
So I don't know when we'll next get to do a show. We might not get to do it uh, next week. Um, maybe, maybe not, but we'll we'll try. Maybe we'll hit you with one on Monday. But anyway, until the next time, make sure you all take care of yourselves. Peace.